Chattanooga moccasins. This one double football classic is brought to you by Coca-Cola Classic and your local Coca-Cola bottler. By Western Sizzlin'. We're cooking what America loves best. By Eastern Airlines, we have your ticket. And by Georgia Southern Boosters, building on your dreams for Georgia Southern Athletics. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the beautiful Smoky Mountains in Chattanooga, Tennessee, in Chamberlain Field on the campus of the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, where tonight we're going to be bringing you the game between the Chattanooga Moccasins and the Univer or Georgia Southern College. And the guy who's going to be here with me, I'm Bill Edwards, doing the play-by-play. -play. Delano Little is going to be doing the color commentary with us. And uh, Delano, I thought we were going to be playing this one in a monsoon. Yes, sir. We, we came down here today from Savannah, Georgia, and it was pouring down the whole way up here. Well, we got here, it was pouring down here in Tennessee, Chattanooga. <laughs> well, about 3 o'clock, it started clearing up, and right now, it's, it's gorgeous conditions. The skies are clear. Perfect night for football. Whoever did the stay-away rain dance did a heck of a job, Bill. They did. <laughs> well, I, I hope that, uh, you know, Irk was telling me just before the game, he said, uh, somebody's living right, and I hope it's us. But, you know, Indians are known for their rain dances, so maybe, I don't know. <laughs> who knows? Uh, now, when you're playing on a, a field like this, uh, they have kept the field in just absolutely outstanding condition. They had a cover on it before the game, or all last night and everything, so well, even though it's taken a lot of water in the last 48 hours, the field is in relatively great shape. Well, really, you, you would think that Tennessee Chattanooga would not want the field to be that dry because they have a bigger power offense. They've got those big guys across the line averaging about 265 pounds. To Georgia Southern's 235 pounds, so it's a big overmatch there for Tennessee <laughs> Chattanooga and they're going to run the ball right at Georgia Southern and Georgia Southern is the more finesse offense. They like to pitch it. They like to throw it a little bit. They would want not to have a wet field. Mm -hmm. But Tennessee Chattanooga has done a terrific job here and it's dry. It's perfect weather for Georgia Southern and it's probably pretty good weather for Tennessee Chattanooga as well, I guess. That's true. <laughs> now, Delano, you have played in the three previous games. We didn't play UT Chattanooga last year. So you played in the three previous ones. None of them have been close. Even though the last score was 34 to 14, that game was not as close as the score indicated. Well, that last game wasn't as close. The two games before that, I think, was 19 to 14. Yeah, that was here. a close game, yes. And uh, the other game was something like 17 to 14 down in Georgia Southern. Mm -hmm. And they all Always traditionally play Georgia Southern tough, and you got to think they have revenge on their mind coming in here, losing three times to Georgia Southern. We're an upstart program, right? Hey, we've been beating Tennessee Chattanooga, who's been around for quite a while. So they're 0 and 2, out. and their first game at home this year. They're coming out fired up tonight. Uh, they played some tough games with Division 1A clubs, Georgia Tech and Tulane, who are very good clubs. Georgia Tech went down to Virginia today in a very close ball game. So Georgia Tech has a pretty good ball club. And uh, Tennessee Chattanooga took them to the wire, and they had to come back. Georgia Tech did late in the game. Okay, we'll be back with the kickoff of the UT Chattanooga Georgia Southern game after this. Among other reasons, this is why they call it the Smoky Mountains. Welcome to Chattanooga, Tennessee, in Chamberlain Field, the game tonight between Georgia Southern and the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. And we have a beautiful night for football. And uh, I'm Bill Edwards, along with Delano Little. And Delano, I'd have never thought that we were going to have a night like this 24 hours ago or even at noon today. Oh, boy, Hurricane Gilbert has been tamed, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, the clouds have rolled out of here, and it is a it gorgeous night in Chattanooga. It was absolutely incredible. Um, it, you wouldn't believe it was just pouring here all day long. It started last night, and with a very few exceptions, it just poured and poured. And uh, the two teams are out on the field now getting ready for the, um, for the coin toss as to uh, who's going to be receiving and who's going to be kicking off. The field here, one of the few fields in the country that runs east to west rather than north to south. All right, so uh, UT Chattanooga was going to be on the receiving end, and Delano, I didn't see who won the toss. Have we elected to defer? Or well, what Bill, to do? tell you the truth, I would think that GSC won the toss and elected to defer. Now, it used to be when you won a, a toss, you wanted to return the ball, but times do change, don't they? So GSC <laughs> did win the toss and elected to defer. Tennessee Chattanooga will receive and defend the East goal. There you see Georgia Southern getting all ready for uh, tonight's ball game, the little pregame prayer that they're having with Coach Irk Russell and, uh, and the rest of the staff and getting ready for tonight's game that is just going to be probably a fantastic contest. UT Chattanooga coming in here, of course, 0-2, but are going against uh, two Division I schools. They want to look good for the home crowd. And uh, speaking of home crowd, not uh, we're definitely not full by any means. There's a big contingent of Georgia Southern people on the other side, just as you might expect. And UT Chattanooga is taking the field now, and I hear more Georgia Southern people than I do Chattanooga people. Delano. Isn't this just amazing? Georgia Southern <laughs> made the trip up in that terrible rainstorm coming down here. They are to be commended for their loyalty. They really are, and they're making the most noise as things stand right now. 
Bill, we got a great story here with the coaches. We got Coach Ert Russell, of course, with his greatness uh, under Coach Vince Dooley at Georgia with that great defense he had all those years. And you have Coach Buddy Nixon for University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. He also has a pretty good background. He got his graduate assistant work under Coach Paul Bear Bryant, of all people. Can you believe that? In Alabama. Incredible. He's done some work at Auburn for quite a while as the defensive part of things. And he has also worked for Louisiana State University, a very good team. And in 1982, he was a defensive coordinator there. And he had the best defense in the SEC that year. So that was a great feat to be accomplished there. David Cool is getting ready to kick off for Georgia Southern as they place the ball down at the hash mark to the far side of the field. And Daryl Streeter is going to be on the receiving end for UT Chattanooga. At least he is the one who is down there standing on the goal line as we're getting ready to get this one underway. And they misspelled David Cool's name up down there, but he starts it with a C, just like you spell regular Cool. And it's going to be taken by Streeter right on the goal line. And he comes up and looks like a nice run back. He gets away right through the middle. And only one man left to get him. And finally did as he's knocked down there by Malcolm Macon Sims, the quarterback, sophomore out of Athens. Bill, I want to correct that. I think that's Michonne. Michonne, okay. What Tennessee Chattanooga, they set up that middle return. A lot of teams elect to go with that middle return. It goes right directly at the kickoff, kickoff defending team. And Tennessee Chattanooga just rushed it right down Georgia Southern's throat, and Coach Russell has not been happy with the play of the kickoff team. Uh, I can tell why, and right now the ball is at the 37-yard line, so they're starting off with a very short field as uh, Brad Patterson, the quarterback, sets him down. And they set off, and the give is going to go to Andre Lockhart around the right side. And he's going to pick up a good deal of yardage up very close to a first down. He may have gotten it, depending on where they spot the ball. But I think it's going to be a little yard short as Michael Berry gets it. And he's 6-2. and two. Uh, Lockhart was the, um, was the carrier. Uh, Bill, it's no secret that the University of Tennessee Chattanooga is going to run the ball right at Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern is missing some of their key defensive players there, James Carter as, and also Charlie Waller. So they are going to run right at Georgia Southern until they stop them. Tennessee Chattanooga is going to run right at them. Patterson set him down. Give off is going to be to Lockhart again. Big hole on the right side. Lockhart easily gets the first down and into Georgia Southern territory, into Georgia Southern's 48-yard line before Daryl Hendricks and Taz Dixon can come over to make the stop. Well, Bill, uh, Tennessee Chattanooga has some big hogs, so to speak, as you can see. Watch the offensive line here. They're big. Watch him knock Garen Alford out of the way right there. He goes the wrong way, and he cuts that ball right up in there for a good a good game there. Taz Dixon is strong safety. has to make the play. And the next play right up the field, they go to Lockhart once again, and Daryl Hendricks tripped him up just as he crossed the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a yard or two. Here's the way the Georgia Southern defense stacks up. However, uh, let's see, Carter is not going to be playing tonight. Uh, in fact, we're going to tell you a little bit about him. He was having some trouble. Uh, Patrick Parr is starting in his place, number 90. Patrick Parr will be in his place, a six-footer from West Point, Georgia. 257 pounds as Patterson brings him out in the eye. In motion right is Kevin Kelvin Philpott as Patterson's back to pass to Philpott. Complete. Pick up of about four yards on the play. Bill, he had all day to throw, it seemed. He dropped back, and I'm telling you, he's just going to set back and get behind those big offensive linemen. They're averaging 265 across the line. And if Georgia Southern can't get to Brad Patterson, it's going to be some trouble for them today because they are going to throw all the time. Rodney Oglesby was a guy who came over to uh, get him. It's third down. Patterson. Overthrown. That was intended for Phil Hooks. I don't know about the 35-yard line, but um, uh, Rodney Oglesby was over there protecting. However, <laughs> there wasn't any need for that. <laughs> so Georgia Southern's defense has risen to the occasion again, Delano. Well, Bill Hooks did a little curl pattern there, and really he broke open, but Patterson's throw was just a little too high to handle. They will punt. Billy Smith is in to punt for him. Taz Dixon is going to be deep, standing at about his 10-yard line. The kick is away. And Taz just may let it go. He does. It's going to get a great bounce. It's going to take actually a Georgia Southern bounce. Thank you. It's finally stopped down there, but uh, they still have uh, excellent. Um, Chattanooga has uh, Georgia Southern, shall we say, somewhat in a hole. As Georgia Southern goes on offense for the first time tonight. 
what Bill Taz Dixon did, the correct thing there. The ball was inside the 10. Whenever the ball's inside the 10, you just let it go down. But I'd like to mention that Rodney Oglesby, we can't get a replay, but he was very close to that ball, and the ball missed him by just a couple of feet. You want to get away from that ball if you're not going to make the catch so it won't bound off you, and Tennessee yeah. Chattanooga would have the ball, and they'd be in business. That's right. And we don't want them in business down there as Raymond Gross brings them out. They shift around into the power eye. Gross is going to give it straight off ahead to Joe Ross. Joe Ross is going to carry him straight up the middle, and he gets stopped by the middle of the Tennessee line after two or three yards. Ross, a 6'1", 200-pound sophomore out of Augusta. And you folks in Augusta can certainly be proud of Joe Ross. He came in here last year, started, got himself a starting role as a freshman, and absolutely put on an incredible performance. Injured the uh, first part of the season because of uh, some pre-injury, pre-game, uh, pre-season stuff, we should say. As Raymond brings him out again, it's going to be second down and about five. Raymond's going to keep on the right side and gets knocked down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of probably about two yards. Greenway, Greenway on the tackle. Uh, if we can see Kelly on that Greenway. replay, we can see on that replay, Georgia Southern was getting off to that option. Raymond Gross comes in. He's going to make the read off the defensive end, but the linebacker slips by. Somebody missed their block. Number 38, Willie Greenway made a good play there, and if he can do that all day, it'll really hurt you. He was right there. So it's third and long. Call it about seven yards. 11.42 to go. We're just underway. No score. And somebody jumped off sides. And it looks like they're pointing to a Georgia Southern man moving on the line. Was that your indication, Delano? Well, uh, actually, it looked like Tennessee Chattanooga jumped the gun, but usually when a... And I think I am right. Yeah, you know? yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> was it Tim McCarver says, never say it's out of here until it's out of here? I couldn't see who the player was, Bill, but it was obvious that Tennessee Chattanooga was coming with a blitz. Obviously, they think that they can put some pressure on Raymond Gross and blitz him, and maybe since he's just a sophomore, maybe make him make some sophomore mistakes. But uh, I'm not sure if that's a good idea. It was Willie Greenway who, um, who jumped the gun in there. So if we've gone to uh, from uh, third down and seven to about a or six and a half to about a third down and a little better than one as Raymond brings him out and the give is going to go to Ernest. No, a pitch is going to go out on the right side to Gary, to Gary Miller and it was all Miller could do to get to the football. Miller's finally run out of bounds over there. Also a senior from Augusta and you're going to see it here once again. Well, Bill, Raymond just never got the ball to him. On the option right here, Raymond comes out. He misses Ernest Thompson, the guy back. That kind of screwed up the play and there's the pitch out of bounds. Gary Miller did the best thing by just falling on it and rolling out of bounds. A good heads up play by Gary Miller. Terry Harbin's come in to punt and he's standing almost at his goal line, just at about the two yard line. They're going to come in and try to get him. He goes down on a wonderful um, act and the ball is going to be taken by UT Chattanooga way down at about the 35 yard line of their own and finally dragged down from behind is number 82 down there who was, um, let's see, Alex Brown who was back to receive the punt. And Bill, that was a 49-yard punt with no return in it. I seem to think that Terry Harvin kicks a lot better when he has a lot of pressure on him. When there's no pressure on him, he may get away a 28-yarder, and he just doesn't feel the pressure, and he doesn't get it off good. Make that Quentin Alford, who was on the receiving end of the punt there. As Chitt UT Chattanooga starts again from their 35-yard line, so once again are a little better than the 35, almost the 36, starting once more in great field position as Patterson brings him up, and they send Kev Kelvin Philpot in motion to the right. Patterson to pass, and it was batted down. I believe it was uh, Darren Alford or somebody who got a, got a hand on it. Darren Alford put his paw right in the middle and kind of deflected that ball, so there was no chance of that one being. Uh, you can see it as we uh, play it again here, Delano, as uh, Alford is going to come right in there. He did this a couple of times last week and well, did Bill, a good uh, job. It was kind of a short hitch pattern to the outside receiver. He got the ball, his hand on the ball, and Rodney Oglesby, the defensive back over there on that side, was licking his chop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wanted that one badly. Second down and 10. Give is going to go straight up the middle. Right for the big guy. In there, Cedric Smith. Smith had a kill in the box. Well, you know, already, Bill, Tennessee Chattanooga has thrown the ball much more than anyone had anticipated. I talked with Coach Irk Russell before the game, and Coach Russell thought they were just going to come out and run it right down their throats until they stopped them. So it's kind of uh, surprising a, a couple of people here. Bart Hughes and Daryl Hendricks are the guys who are really in on the stop just then as we have a third down and about six or seven yards to go. Ball is right on the 40-yard line. Patterson goes back to pass again, right across the middle, complete for a first down. That was given in there to uh, Travis McNeil. 
6'3", senior tight end. Well, Bill, the one thing about Georgia Southern's defense, they have a lot of men on the outside, and it opens up that inside, and if that tight end can get in there and do that little hook pattern all night, it's going to be trouble for Georgia Southern. Taz Dixon in on the stop, and also there's an injured player on the field for Georgia Southern. And with that injury, we will take this time out. The score is Georgia Southern nothing, UTC Chattanooga nothing. Sean Sims has come in to replace Taz Dixon, who was injured on the play, and we have a first and ten for UT Chattanooga as Patterson is going to hand it off to Andre Lockhart. Lockhart's got a little running room, but he's wrapped up very, very quickly by Terry Young, and Terry Young knocks him down. Uh, the ball pops loose, but it's way after the whistle. Terry Young, the big senior out of Savannah, 174 pounds and 5 feet 11. Well, Bill, brother, excuse me, Bill. I just going to say Brother Nay just graduated last year. Well, uh, Bill, Taz Dixon was injured on that play. We can't afford too many more injuries. Uh, James Carter, the starting defensive linebacker for Georgia Southern, is out. We'll tell you a little bit about that later. And Charlie Waller hasn't even seen action this year due to a knee injury. So we can't afford too many more injuries. Well, that's the truth. We certainly couldn't afford uh, Taz being out of there, but that's where we stand right now. As Patterson goes back once again, he's going to fire it. It's going to be intercepted, almost intercepted. It was dropped by Bart Hughes. Hughes had it in his hands, and he dropped it and hit the turf just as he was hitting it at the same time, but he almost had that one. Well, Bill, on that play, Brad Patterson did kind of a little play fake right there, and he's going to roll out, and he's going to see that receiver on the outside. But Bart Hughes makes a great play as he comes in from his outside linebacker position and makes a great effort, and he almost comes up with it. So that'll bring up third down and almost uh, 10. Well, third down and nine. Back to pass once again and almost intercepted once more. This time it's Rodney Oglesby who had it in his hands and juggled it, and it was dropped. Five foot nine, 165 pound freshman out of Swainsboro. Rodney Oglesby has seen some good playing time this year, and that's going to bring up another punting situation. So Billy Smith comes back in, and back in the single safety position there to uh, receive is Rodney Oglesby. Billy Smith, the leading punter in the Southern Conference, in to punt it away. He's got it, good height on it. And once again, a call for a fair catch, and Oglesby has it, so Georgia Southern will start it at the 15-yard line. We'll be back with the score, Georgia Southern nothing and UT Chattanooga nothing, right after this from your local station. Chattanooga, they did not hold the game for us. There was somewhat of a cross-up here what, uh, as to what happened on the change of possession, so they started playing anyway. We've run two plays. Raymond Gross made uh, five yards on the first play. He lost about three yards on the second play. We come up with a third down and about seven yards to go as we come back. Let's call it a short seven, maybe third down and six is the way it's posted on the board. Eight minutes and 15 seconds left in the first period, and there's no score. As Raymond brings him up and goes back to pass, now he decides he might, go, he might run with it, but he's going go anyway as he gets cut down from behind by Willie Greenway. And let's see, and there's some other folks in there, too. Well, Bill, that's that little quarterback draw that Georgia Southern runs, and they run it very well. But that time, the uh, defensive line for Tennessee Chattanooga came rushing in. Nobody picked them up, and nobody moved them out like they're supposed to. They're supposed to kind of form a wedge, but they didn't do it, and Raymond Gross was set behind the line of scrimmage. Joe Brunson was the guy who knocked him down. Terry Harvin gets the punt away, but it's not very good, and it's angling over toward the sidelines and takes a UT Chattanooga bounce before it's down right inside the 40, maybe right at the 40-yard line. So UT Chattanooga once again in great field position. We've had nothing all night. A 26-yard punt for Terry Harvin. Delino, I guess if you could point to a weakness in Georgia Southern's uh, playing in the last six years, they've always had trouble finding a, a punter. They've always had some trouble with the punting Yes, game. they have. Now, like I said, Terry Harvin does a pretty good job when he's pressured. When he's not pressured, he doesn't get off the good punt. <laughs> that's, that's strange. Just tell the line to fall down next time. Patterson back to pass. He's looking out in the flats. Got it right across the middle. A beautiful play. Complete in there to big number 26. That's Jeff Legg who comes in. Jeff Legg right across the middle. Well, Bill, that time Brad Patterson just dropped back. I told pickup. you earlier, as he drops back right here, you can see that tight end release. And Georgia Southern is susceptible to the uh, backs coming out of the middle, out of the backfield, 
across the middle of the field, and there it is again. 20-yard pickup on the play. First down in UT Chattanooga on the march. And Georgia Southern wants to call a timeout. So with that timeout on the field, Wills also pause for these messages. With seven minutes and 26 seconds to go in the first quarter, the period the score is Georgia Southern nothing, UT Chattanooga nothing. Back at UT Chattanooga. They're on the march. First down at the 20-yard line of Georgia Southern. So far, Georgia Southern has been in a hole all night. Seven minutes and 26 seconds to go in the opening stanza. Brad Patterson takes them up to the line of scrimmage and has them lined up in the eye with Philpott split wide to the right. Patterson is going to give it right up the middle to Smith. Smith has got a big hole up the middle. I'll take that back. It's going to be uh, Streeter, Daryl Streeter. Michael Berry is the guy who finally makes the stop for Georgia Southern, but not before they pick up a first and goal at the seven-yard line of Georgia Southern. Bill Darrell Streeter has been around for quite a while. He was around when I was playing football about two or three years ago, so he is a good player, and he's very fast. The pitch is going to go to Streeter around the left side. Tries to cut back in, and there's no place to go as he is wrapped up immediately by Giff Smith. Big number 95 who made some big plays against Florida A&M last week. The six foot two, 225 pound sophomore out of Mableton. A loss on the play back to about the nine yard line. Lost about a yard and a half. It'll be second and goal from the nine. Second down and goal. Six and a half minutes to go. First period, no score. Patterson brings him down. To give in the middle and no place to go. Patrick Parr stopped that play immediately. Well, Bill Patrick Parr doing a good job for James Carter, who is out with an ankle injury. But uh, Georgia Southern gets tough right around this area. Very, very tough. Parr, a freshman from West Point. And that was Cedric Smith on the carry. It'll be third and goal from the nine. We've had some great defensive stands against UT Chattanooga. Let's hope we can come up with another one. We being Georgia Southern and a big one here. <laughs> Once again, Giff Smith, another big play to make it fourth and goal. A loss of about eight yards. Well, Bill, this is an outside linebacker blitz. Here comes Giff Smith. He is untouched. He gets his hand on Patterson shirt. Yeah, he's going down. <laughs> no place to go. And as we said, we've had some great goal line stands as Dennis Waters comes in. He is trying to become UT Chattanooga's all-time leading place kicker. This one is up, and it looks good from here, and it's not. It's wide. And the Georgia Southern fans we have a terrible it. angle anyway, and I'm glad. So Georgia Southern has stopped a big threat. And with five minutes and 16 seconds to go in the first quarter, there's no score. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We don't have the clout that CBS and NBC and ABC do, obviously, because they're not stopping the game for us on change of possession. So we have run two plays already as we uh, resume time. It is now third down and about two or three yards to go. And Georgia Southern wants to call a timeout. How appropriate. At this point, uh, let's see. They ran a couple of plays. Joe Ross carried the ball on both of them. And uh, that was the way um, we have picked up eight yards on those two carries. Only got one yard on the first play and seven yards on the next one. We desperately need a first down to try to get things going and give the defense a little rest here, Delano. Well, Bill, something tells me that you can't keep Georgia Southern's offense stymied for long. Sooner or later, they're going to break a big run. I don't know who it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be Joe Ross. I don't know if it's going to be Raymond Gross. But you just have to look for something to happen. They can't stop Georgia Southern's offense very long. And when you had a great uh, defensive stand like we, uh, like Georgia Southern just had, I would think that uh, that would be uh, something to fire up the offense as well. It certainly was. So it was one of those basic 40-second timeouts here as we have a third down and two. Raymond brings him up to the line of scrimmage. Joe Ross is right behind him in a split backfield. As you see Coach Irk Russell standing there on the sidelines. Clock now ticking with Fort 16, and Raymond rolls to his right. He's going to fire way upfield, and it's going to be, looks like it's complete. 
down to big number 84, Ross Warsham. Ross Warsham caught it up there, a uh, first down, our first first down of the evening. Well, well, Bill, I think that's the best third down play to run in college football. Raymond Gross puts the pressure on the outside defense for Tennessee Chattanooga. He's got the option of running. He's got the option of throwing. Ross Worsham did the smart thing. He stopped when he saw his quarterback in trouble, and he came back and made a good catch. An All-American in high school, and Worsham has done a great job catching for us over the years. A big senior has, and Roy Raymond rolling to his right. He's outside. Raymond's got big yardage. He's going to be run out of bounds about a yard shy of the first down over toward the Georgia Southern bench, or into the Georgia Southern bench, actually, as Junior Jackson finally runs him out, and apparently there's a a little bit of a scuffle over there on the sidelines. Yeah, that's no place for Tennessee Chattanooga Moccasin to be over there on that no. Southern Eagles sideline. All right, watch it as we show it to you again, circling around to his left. It was a keeper all the way is what it looked like to Lano. That's what it was. It's the same play that they ran on third down just a few minutes ago. Raymond Gross puts the pressure on the outside defense. He has the option of running and throwing, and he takes the run for eight yards. Is that Joe Ross or Ernest Thompson that had that beautiful block on yes, the corner? Yes, that's a key element to that uh, outside run like that. Talking to Joe Ross before the season, he said, you know, if people don't realize the backs don't have the play off just because, uh, just because they're not carrying the football. In fact, that's, uh, they have tougher assignments with the blocking. That's true. To give up the middle to Ross. Ross is going to get it to the 40-yard line and very close to a first down, depending on where they spot it. Georgia Southern may have it. Tony Bowick on the tackle, the senior, 6'2", 252-pounder. And, Bill, you mentioned that the uh, offensive backs for Georgia Southern don't have a playoff. They're always going full speed. So are the wide receivers for Georgia Southern. They have always been known as the wide blockers, so to speak. They get downfield and make those key blocks on the option. If you don't make the downfield blocks on the option, it'll never work. Southern didn't get the mark. So Gary Miller and Joe Ross are both in the ball game now, out of the power eye. Third down and a couple of inches. Big hole across the middle as Ernest Thompson slices through there and goes across the 45. Down to about the 46, 47-yard line. And Ernest Thompson is fired up. Look at him giving that handshake to Tony Belson. They are fired up right now. Back-to-back -back first downs for the Eagles. There was something on that play. If Ernest Thompson takes that ball and he gets one more block downfield, he could be bye-bye city. Isn't that the truth? Just <laughs> under three minutes. No score in the ball game. Just under three minutes in the first quarter, we should say, as Raymond decides to change something at the line of scrimmage. Split backfield. He's going to keep it. Daylight to the outside. Daylight, and Raymond keeps on trucking. Touchdown. Four yard run to glory for Raymond Gross. Now watch this, Bill. Raymond Gross takes the ball. He goes outside. He's got that linebacker in a bad position. Should I go? To, should I get him or should I go to the back? Well, he goes the wrong way. Raymond, Gr Raymond Gross takes advantage of it. And I told you they couldn't stop the Georgia Southern <laughs> Eagle offense for long. <laughs> Georgia Southern goes 80 yards in seven plays to make the score six to nothing as Mike Dallas comes in for the extra point. Perfect. With two minutes, 27 seconds to go in the first period. The score, Georgia Southern 7, UT Chattanooga, nothing. We'll be back. Cool's kick is going to go out of bounds, and that's going to cost us five yards. So no time goes off the clock. We'll kick it, re kick it from the 30. He kind of hooked that one in there like he was playing soccer. Delano. Well, Coach Russell likes his kickers to kick the ball to the far side of the field, so they'll have to go all the way back across the field to get some type of return going. And sometimes the kicker, he doesn't, he's not perfect. He's going to get the ball out of bounds once or twice, <laughs> and, uh, but it's going to back him up five yards. Seven to nothing to score. If you just joined us, Raymond Gross just had a 44-yard touchdown run. As we said, his third of the year of 40 yards or more. And we try it again. This one goes not quite as deep. It's going to be taken to the 10-yard line. Back across the 25. Back to up to about the 30-yard line. And so it's going to be good field position for him once again as Michael West comes back on the return. 
for Bill Street to return that ball out past the 30-yard line, and Coach Russell does not like that. He calls his, his kickoff team the KKK. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the crazy kick The cover. crazy kick cover. <laughs> and uh, whoever does the best job will be the Grand Dragon. I can tell you, as the way things are going, there will be no Grand Dragon today. Well, <laughs> he's the only guy who can get away with that, too, Delano. You realize that, don't you? True. <laughs> Eric Russell is an incredible man. Patterson, pitch back. It's going to go back to Streeter. Streeter gets wrapped up after a couple of yards. Bill, we got a penalty flag down on Andre. And when you get the penalty flag in that area, it usually means holding on offense. Daryl Hendricks is a guy who wrapped things up for Georgia Southern on the play after a gain of about three yards. Going to be a holding call going against UT Chattanooga. Two for two, Bill. You can count? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, speaking of keeping count, we want to welcome Jack Lane with us once again. Jack is keeping statistics for us as he did at the Appalachian State game. And Jackie brought us better luck already. <laughs> we never led in that one, did we? Never scored, as a matter of fact, so I... Patterson's got him down once again, out of the eye. Give is going to go right to Cedric Smith, and he is not going to go very far. Tim Brown was the first guy to get to him and say, nah, I don't think so. Hey Bill, I want to show you something right here that makes a successful ball team. Let me show you why Tennessee Chattanooga has done rather well this season. Watch Brad Patterson as he drops back. Look at him carry out that fake. He goes back mm -hmm. and he sets up, and he has a story within himself. His brother, Barry Patterson, died earlier this year, July 14th after an extended illness, and he has dedicated this season to the memory of his brother. Touching story indeed, as Patterson brings him out once again in the eye, and there he's going to go back to pass. Patterson still rolling to his left. Passes almost, he was first went right through a Georgia Southern defender's hands, and then it was into the hands of Travis McNeil, who simply dropped it. Daryl Hendricks was there covering on the play, but watch it go right through a Georgia Southern player's hands, and then Hendrick, uh, McNeil is going to drop it right in his paws. That looked like uh, Daryl Hendricks, Bill, and that's his second drop interception. He's going to be kicking himself tomorrow <laughs> when he looks in the paper and doesn't see his name by an interception. Because <laughs> that McNeil caught that one, of course, that would have been a huge chunk of yardage and would have given him pretty much a close first down or very close to it. As it stands right now, it's third down and about 20 yards to go. Third and 19 as Patterson goes back, and he's going to air this one out big time, going around and almost, I believe, somebody's going to get called for pass interference. Well, Bill, if, if I'm guessing things right, I would think that this play would be on Tennessee Chattanooga. It looks as if the receiver went over the back of the Georgia Southern defender on that play. It looked like it, but Rodney Oglesby was down there defending, and I think they're going to call it against, uh, well, we'll see who they're going to call it against. But you see, watch it again. See Brad Patterson dropping back and going long, and here comes the, see, that's, looks like the wide receiver going over the defensive. I'm thinking that back. they may have said that he touched him on the way down the field, Delano, I don't know. Well, they say a 15-yard penalty. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, if he did touch him down on the way on the field, I didn't, didn't see it on the replay. I don't know if we can get that replay again. If he did touch him, then it is the correct call. I think they actually ran into each other somewhere around the 50-yard line. We're going to see it one more time and see if we can pick it up. That makes it an automatic first down. There it is right there. You can see mm -hmm. them kind of uh, tripping up there. And there's the flag. The referee right on top of the call. Good call. Makes it a first down. Moving it up to the 43-yard line of the Moccasins. And the give is going to go to Smith. Smith, big hole over on the right side. Smith has got a first down as he gets tripped up and finally knocked down over there by Michonne Sims. Well, Bill, that was kind of a delayed play, and it kind of fooled the Georgia Southern defense for a second. You can see the linemen coming in. They're rushing. It's kind of a draw. Mm-hmm. He takes the ball, and he's got a gaping hole there, and he does the rest on his own. Uh, Mashawn Sims comes up and kind of upends him there. Good enough for a first down, though. Very close to Georgia Southern territory. Nose of the football just shy of the 49-yard line. 53 seconds to go in this first quarter. 7-0 Georgia Southern. But UT Chattanooga trying to tie things up as the give is going to go once again, this time to Streeter. Streeter is going to get about three or four tough yards before he's knocked down outside at the Georgia Southern 45-yard line, picking up about six, maybe five on the play. Aaron Alford wraps him up at that point. 
Good Daryl Streeter has carried the ball a lot in this game. That's predominantly what they're hoping to do is get him through that line and let his athletic ability do the rest. Second down and five. 18 seconds to go, first period. Patterson to pass. And he was dead just as he let the ball go. Boy, I want to tell you. Oh my Bart goodness, Hughes was in there. Hit. Also, Michael Berry. Berry came in and buried him. Well, I don't know if we can see a replay on that, but uh, I guess people saw it in the first play. Michael Berry came in on a blitz from the outside. As you can see right here, Brad Watch Patterson it. dropping back. Watch here he Barry comes, Michael come Berry. Back. Boom, oh. hello. <laughs> Jeez. He knew that one was coming. So it's third down and five with eight seconds to showing on the first quarter clock. Patterson to pass once again, and he almost gets decked by Barry, and he's finally dragged down from behind over there by Tim Durden. Durden out of Twin City, Georgia, the big 6'1 senior, dragged him down from behind by his jersey. As you watch it once more. Well, Bill, as you see, there comes Barry again. The uh, fullback misses his block. The, the uptail back, Daryl Streeter does. And uh, he's going to get yelled at <laughs> come tomorrow in the films. <laughs> That's the end of the first period with a score. Georgia Southern 7, UT Chattanooga nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter after this local timeout. UT Chattanooga getting ready to punt it away as Billy Smith does the honors. Nice end over end kick, leading punter in the Southern Conference, and we're just going to let it bounce. Rodney Oglesby just going to watch it, and they're not going to let it bounce any further as they down it about the 14-yard line. So once again, Georgia Southern starting from a hole, but we started from a hole the last time. Yes, we did, and uh, Raymond Gross got the offense in here, and he took it all the way down the field with that nice long run. Uh, Georgia Southern, I'm sure Coach Russell is hoping to do that again. 35-yard punt for Billy Smith. And Georgia Southern ready to put it back in play as the second quarter just underway. The score is seven to nothing, and a nice crowd finally piling in. I think everybody decided since the weather was so nice, they'd come out to the ball game tonight. Boy, I'll tell you, about noon today, it was pouring. And Raymond's going to change the play once again at the line of scrimmage as he got him in a split eye, and somebody jumped out too soon. And I think number 51 on the line moved there a little too quickly. Sean Ganey, and that's going to back us up five yards. It looked like several people yeah, a bunch moved of folks. Uh, too early for Georgia Southern on that play. A lot of times when you get to changing the, the play at the line, you get a little confused sometimes. You maybe can't hear what the call was, and you get a jumping offside. I know what it's like not to be able to hear. <laughs> Those uh, listening down in our uh, technical truck, uh, if we don't get the uh, sound turned down on these headphones, uh, my ears are going to start bleeding. <laughs> that band is loud. Raymond's got an out split. He's going to change that play once again, and the Chattanooga band strikes up. They're going to see what they're going to do. Is they're going to give it to Joe Ross up through the middle there, and there's not going to be much room. Well, Bill, that band is quite loud, and I'm, I'm not mistaken, sooner or later, the referee's going to have to stop them because Georgia Southern is going to have problems here. Bill, I'd also like to mention that we do have a report on Taz Dixon's injury. It's been diagnosed as an ankle sprain. He could return in the second half, but it is probably not likely. Oh, darn it. Didn't need to hear that. It's going to hurt Georgia Southern. In motion. Raymond fires over to Tony Belzer on the sidelines. He's got it. He's out of bounds down around the 17-yard line. So a pickup of about three yards from the original line of scrimmage is Jackie Washington. Ran him around, ran him out of bounds out there on the corner. It's going to bring up a third down and about 13 yards to go. Well, Bill, it appears that uh, Coach Jay Russell was listening to him. I told him earlier, <laughs> the offensive um, back coach, I told him earlier to maybe throw some uh, little short hitch passes out to Tony Belzer to drop his yards per average catch so uh, it wouldn't knock me out of the record book. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it third down and eight instead of third down and 13, which sounds a little better, but we're still deep in our own territory. And as Raymond rolls right to pass, he's going to fire out and complete for a first down over there to Tony Belzer again. So Georgia Southern keeps the drive alive as Mike Lohman comes in over to cover. But Tony had curled right inside there, slipped down a little bit, but boy, he had that one. Bill, all this is is a rollout. Raymond Gross gets to the corner and looks for Tony Belzer to do a hook out, not a hook in. And as you see, Belzer runs precise patterns. That's what makes him so good. He catches the ball and gets down, avoids injury there. Great play by Tony Belzer. He's a super one. 
first down for Georgia Southern. Second quarter just underway, and the Eagles lead seven to nothing. Although UT Chattanooga's look good as Joe Ross goes straight ahead for about three yards on the play. Uh, the Eagles are the ones who have had the touchdown. Bill, I don't know if we can get a replay of that, but Raymond Gross made a very heads-up play. It's kind of athletic ability to be an option quarterback. You almost have to feel the defense coming down, and right then he had somebody on his back, and he made the dive handoff, and it was the best thing to do. If he would have kept that ball, he may have gotten hit from behind and fumbled the ball. Raymond brings him up at second down and seven, and UT Chattanooga jumps off sides. I don't know if anybody moved in there, but flag went down, and I believe um, Joe Ross moved. Going to be a procedure call against the Eagles again, probably. Looked like Joe Ross may have uh, taken off too soon. Chattanooga took the first step, to be honest with you, but Georgia Southern cannot move. The defense can move and get back right. across the ball in time before it's tight. But uh, Joe Ross lost his concentration there, and he broke down, and consequently they lose five yards on the play. So that'll bring up second down and 12 on the illegal procedure call. Georgia Southern has four penalties for 30 yards already. They have to be careful with those penalties. They can really hurt you in a ball game of this magnitude. This is the fourth meeting between Georgia Southern and UT Chattanooga since 1984, and the Eagles have won the three previous ball games. The first one in Statesboro in 1984. That was a 24 to 17 victory for Georgia Southern. They're up seven to nothing in this one as Roman. Raymond rolls right. He's gonna keep it. Raymond is gonna get up to about the 30 yard line and is knocked down there just shy of the 30. As Tony Bowick finally comes over to knock him down. Well, Bill, as Raymond Rowe left, he looked like he was getting ready to release the ball. Right there, option quarterback always has to have the option to take that ball down and run it up. That's what Raymond did. The defense made a good play. He put it away just in time, and that's going to bring up another third down and eight, just as we had a moment ago. Just about 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. 12 minutes and 13 seconds, and Georgia Southern wants to take a timeout. Raymond Gross wants to talk things over. He's limping a little bit, and we're going to take this timeout for a network commercial with the score. Georgia Southern 7, UT Chattanooga, nothing. We'll be right back. Well, they held it up for us this time. Here we go. We're back. 12 minutes, 13 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia Southern up 7 to nothing. Third down and 8. Raymond's decided what he wanted to do. Got the uh, play from the sideline from Coach Jay Russell. Offensive coordinator. Yes, that's Irk's son. And he's going to roll to his right. Going to fire it out there in the flats. Complete to Belzer. Belzer's behind everybody. Belzer keeps going. Belzer down to the 35-yard line of UT Chattanooga. First down. Well, Bill, you have to love that. Raymond Gross is putting the pressure on the outside of the Chattanooga defense. He rolls right. There's Belcher doing that out route that he just did a few minutes ago. And the defensive player comes up, and Tony Belcher runs by him, and he almost breaks it all the way. A few more yards for Tony, a few more steps. Tony Belcher would have been gone. Jackie Washington finally dragged him down just shy of the 35-yard line. And Georgia Southern on the attack again. And let's see, timeouts, and let's see, Chattanooga wants to take, is that an equipment timeout or something, or is that a problem? I think Tennessee Chattanooga took that timeout. I'm sure they did. Junior Jackson came off on the sidelines and wanted to talk about something, wanted to talk with his coach. This may be one of those 40-second deals or something. Bill, I would imagine this is a good time to pass on some scores. Uh, well, it's not a good time, but I want to tell you, Florida State upset. All right, Delano, we'll be right back. We're going to be back with a score seven to nothing in favor of Georgia Southern. After this, from your local stations. Off the right side, for Junior Jackson wraps him up. Just under 12 minutes to go in the first half. Georgia Southern is up 7 to nothing and on the move again, just inside UTC's 35-yard line, down to about the, between, uh, ball is resting on the hash mark, uh, between the hash marks of the 33 and the 34-yard line. Bill, as I was mentioning right before we went to the break, the big upset today, Florida State, ranked number 10, upset number 3 ranked Clemson, 24 to 21. How about that? That was a good ball game today. Two receivers split 
to the right and left. Ross Warsham to the top of your screen, and Donnie Alford is the intended target down at the bottom of your screen, but the ball was way overthrown. Alford was the intended target. Jackie Washington over there covering, but he wasn't doing anything. He didn't have to do anything but watch. That stops the clock with 11-16. Hey, you can see Raymond Gross there. He's walking rather gingerly on his right foot, it looks like. He hurt himself just a moment ago. I don't know what uh, exactly was, but I noticed he was limping a little bit, Delano. I don't know what, um, he doesn't look like he's feeling very well. Well, Bill, here comes Belter. More than likely, the play will be headed somewhere in his vicinity. Okay. So Belzer's back in. Donnie Alford goes out. Donnie Al Allen, I should say. Not Donnie Alford. I don't know where I got that from. And Raymond still looking for somebody to pass to. Going to reverse his field and going to decide to run right up the middle, and he doesn't go anywhere. Gets about a yard. Maybe that's it before he's finally wrapped up. Here comes the field goal kicker, Bill. It looks like we are going to go for a field goal. David Cool's coming in. He'll try a 50-yarder. Ball will be right on. Now, Tim Foley's longest field goal of his career to date was kicked here three years ago when he booted a 53-yarder. Let's see how this one comes out. It's got distance. He has it. A 50-yard field goal for David Cool to give Georgia Southern a 10 to nothing lead with 10.35 to go in the half. And we'll be back with more action for Georgia Southern Eagles and the UT Chattanooga Moccasins right after we take this time out for a network commercial. <laughs> Executive Director of Southern Boosters, and I'd like to introduce you to a truly unique way to watch the most exciting football team in America. From a climate-controlled executive VIP box in Paulson Stadium, you can experience Eagle football in a setting of convenience and comfort. Viewing for up to 18 people, private restrooms, wet bar, and catered meals before all games are only a few of the advantages to leasing a VIP box. For more information on this great opportunity, call me at 912-681-5520. We're back. Ten minutes and 30 seconds to go. We've already had the kickoff. They're just, uh, the officials are just not holding the, the uh, timeouts long enough for us, so we apologize for that. But at any rate, it's going to be uh, UT Chattanooga going on the attack starting at their 19-yard line. Uh, Streeter got it up to that point and was decked. And there's going to be a give over here to Cedric Smith as he comes over on the right side, and he gets wrapped up by Giff Smith after maybe a yard or two to make it up second down and nine. Georgia Southern has a 10 to nothing lead in this one. Bill, I'm tired of the officials not holding the ball game for us. I'm going to go down there and crack one of them and see what you can do, Delano. Walk softly and carry a big stick, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Ten minutes in the first half. As Brian Patterson brings him up. Looks over the defense. Got him in a split backfield and wants to pass. And he's going to be wrapped up big time almost. Gets out of the grass. Long throw downfield and intercepted by, I believe that's uh, Randall Boone. Boone has it. Patterson back at looking around there desperately trying to find somebody to pass it to. And I don't know where in the world he, Darren Alford was just chasing him all over the field. Watch this. Darren comes back and almost has him at one point. He gets out of the grass. Passes it way downfield, and Randall Boone is right there. Big interception for him. He had a big one against JMU last year, which stopped a major drive as JMU looked like they were driving to tie the ball game, and Randall Boone picks it off for the good guys. I'm sorry, UT Chattanooga fans, if we, if we sound like we're prejudiced <laughs> for Georgia Southern, but we are. And uh, right away, Raymond wants to go to the air. He fires it over to Donnie Allen, and Allen's got it just outside the 35-yard line. And they're going to that's where they're going to put it down, right outside the 35, at uh, where Cedric Taylor knocked him down. Jackie Washington also in there on the play. The nose of the football resting right on the 35-yard line, with the clock running at 9:22 in the first half. Southern up 10 to nothing. Bill, that's a very dangerous play. Raymond Gross rode right, and then looking through all the way back across the field. You don't want to do that. Sometimes you'll get those picked up and you'll be uh, kind of sorry you threw it. Yeah, and they only picked up about two yards on the play. Well, they gave, they've given them three, so make it second down and seven as Raymond fakes it into the line and decides he's going to keep it. And uh, boy, that was a mistake. 
He got smeared by Junior Jackson and uh, Tony Bowick. Losing about five, six yards on the play. Well, that uh, time, uh, no, they Junior Jackson it. just read the play all the way. He saw option. He bust right through the line. There he is, a linebacker coming up, and he's all over Raymond Gross. Blocking broke down, and actually they're going to mark it from the forward progress, so uh, we only lost about one yard or two yards, so it's third down and nine. Still going out to the right are the Belser brothers. Daryl Belser far right, Tony Belser inside is going their way. And they're going to go back to the weak side. Raymond got try, almost gets away from two people, but he gets decked there behind the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be field goal time again as Willie Greenway wouldn't let him go. Well, Bill, now that I was wrong saying it was going Belson's way, I'm going to quit predicting. I know a lot of people out there are glad. <laughs> I will set up. Well, we're going to punt this one. Terry Harbin comes in and maybe try to get them deep in their own territory here. UT Chattanooga has not been working from advantageous field position for a while yet, and he gets a high, long one, and this may not be the one he wants to go long. It goes right into the end zone, and so it'll be brought out to the 20, a 39-yard kick. So with 17 minutes, with seven minutes, that is, and 41 seconds to go, it is Georgia Southern 10, UT Chattanooga, nothing. We'll be back after this local timeout. Welcome back to Chamberlain Field in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where Georgia Southern fans, your team is on top, 10 to nothing. UT Chattanooga on the attack after a punt. First and 10 from the 20. Patterson brings him out. The give is going to go to Lockhart. Lockhart's got running room, a first down across the 35. Up to about the 37-yard line, a 17-yard pickup on the play. Randall Boone finally knocked him down. For Bill, that time Lockhart was going to take the ball to the right, and he saw that hole back to the left, and he does what all good backs should be able to do. He cuts it back, and he takes it for a good game. First down for UT Chattanooga, up at the 37-yard line. Seven and a half minutes to play in the first half. Chattanooga out of the eye. Moccasin going to give it to Lockhart again. Lockhart around the right side. Gets away from two blockers. Going to get about uh, six, seven yards up to near the 45-yard line before he stops over there. Bart Hughes is the guy who knocks him down along with Patrick Parr in on the play and another eagle down, and that's Bart Hughes. And boy, that's all we need. Bart Hughes, a junior out of Duluth, 210-pounder. And he's holding his right calf or around his knee. Dr. Bob Swent out on the field looking looking there at his leg and as they take a look at that we may want to take a time out at this point seven minutes and seven seconds to go in the first half with Georgia Southern all right we won't take a time out I take that back ten to nothing is the score well Bill Georgia Southern just has to be feeling very down about these injuries of course Taz Dixon has already left the game I'm not sure if he's going to be back uh, with a sprained ankle and now Bart Hughes is down Boy, this isn't good. Here's a halftime score for you. Georgia and Mississippi State are tied at 14 at the half. Once again, that's Georgia 14, Mississippi State 14 at halftime. Well, Bill, Coach Vince Dooley said it was going to be a, a rough one, and everybody laughed and said, ah, get out of here, Vince, yeah. you're like you always are, but there those, you go. Those dog fights are something over in Starkville. <laughs> For those of you, if 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 there is uh, if you're noticing a transmission problem that we're having, we have uh, some bad weather. Uh, folks, just try to bear with us as much as possible, because uh, we are having some uh, microwave trouble with uh, with our satellite relay. So if you are experiencing some picture difficulty, uh, that's there's only one reason for it. That's because we're having some trouble with it. Well, Bill, we don't have any bad weather right here in Chattanooga, but no, we don't. Uh, but we have some bad luck from here to Savannah. Yes, we do have some bad luck with these injuries. They're carrying Bart Hughes off on a stretcher. Bill, while they're taking him off, let me mention a couple of other scores. Miami won today, number one ranked, but they were pushed to the limit. Ooh, they That's pulled right. that one by, out against Michigan? By Michigan, 31 to 30, they kicked a last second field goal Good. to win that ball game. They are so lucky, Heavens. aren't they? Boy, they really are. 
when play resumes, the ball is going to be just outside the 45-yard line. Chattanooga will have it a second down and about two yards to go, maybe three. Seven minutes and seven seconds to go in the first half, and Georgia Southern's already had two men carried off the field tonight. Taz Dixon was knocked out earlier. And, Bill, they were two key players. Now we just lost, yes, two key players. Now we just lost Bart Hughes. I got news for you. We're not that deep. Everybody's a key player. A give is going to go right in the middle to look like uh, Smith before he was wrapped up by Daryl Hendricks, and he very close to a first down, but I'm not sure that he got it. We'll just have to wait for the spot. Everett Sharp and uh, Everett Sharp in on uh, in for Bart Hughes, by the way. Well, Bill Chattanooga is kind of uh, set with just running the ball right at Georgia Southern right now and forcing the ball at them, but they didn't pick up much on that play. So it's going to be third down. They got hardly a yard. Third down and two is what they're calling it. Looks like one from over here, but they're closer to it than we are. Give is going to go straight up the middle, and it looks like he may have it. That's Cedric Smith. Stopped by the middle of the Georgia Southern line. He didn't need but about a yard, but Giff Smith and Darren Alford were the ones who, who stacked him up there, but it's going to be a first down near midfield. This may be the most important series for Tennessee Chattanooga thus far in this game. They don't want to go in at halftime down 10 to nothing. They want something on this drive right here. Clock running, coming down toward the six-minute mark, and UT Chattanooga trailing 10 to nothing as Patterson's going to give it off to Lockhart. Lockhart tries that right side, and boy, there is no place to go as Terry Young uh, wraps him up along with Michael Perry. But they say a marker is down as we take a look at it again, and it looks like it's going to be a holding call, and it's going to be against UT Chattanooga. Well, Bill, there's another delayed handoff from Tennessee Chattanooga, but this time Terry Young and Michael Berry were not buying it. No. <laughs> <Boy>. <laughs> That'll move it back 10 yards, back to the 41-yard line. Marked off from the point of the infraction. So it's still going to be first down, but it's first down and 20. Back at their own 41. As Patterson brings him out. He's going to take the snap from Travis Ballard. To pass. In the flats. Complete, but nowhere to go as Terry Young wrapped up Travis McNeil almost immediately. They may have picked up three yards on the play to make it second down and about uh, 13, 17 yards. Bill Terry Young is bulldogging people on one side of the field and he goes over to the other side of the field. Watch him as he comes up on the ball, makes a good play. That's the way you teach those defensive bags. And watch him as he takes them and whips them down into the ground. That's called a bulldog. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. He had latched onto him big time. Second down and 19. They only gave him one yard on the play. Patterson, plenty of time. Knocked down, almost intercepted by Daryl Hendricks. <laughs> Daryl just going to have to admit he must be playing with mittens on. Bill Patterson drops back here. He's looking over the middle. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. There he releases it, and there's Daryl Hendricks, who is ha he is having a super game, but wouldn't it be even more super if he had three interceptions? <laughs> Boy, that's for sure. Darrell was one of those unknowns coming into the season, Delano. A lot of new faces on defense. And he has done superb. Or superb lead. Patterson back to pass on third down. Across the middle. It's going to be complete to Travis McNeil. But he's not going to get anywhere near even the original line of scrimmage, bringing up a fourth down and about 11, 12, or 13 yards to go. And Bill, who is that on the play again? Darrell Hendricks. He is doing it, by the way, of airwaves, and he is doing it on the ground. Darrell Hendricks. Steps back here. The linebacker's job is to wait on that quarterback and to wait to wait to see what move he is going to make. He watches. He sees it released over the middle. He breaks on the ball. Look at him. He trips up the feet. That is a great linebacker. Indeed. And it was Rodney Oglesby who came in and made the stop. And Billy Smith in to punt it away. Smith gets it down, and they're just going to let it go. And it keeps on rolling. And keeps on rolling. And it's finally going to be down at about the 11-yard line where Georgia Southern will put it in play with four minutes and eight seconds to go in the first half of this ballgame. Georgia Southern 10. And UTC Chattanooga, nothing. A 43-yard punt for Billy Smith, the Southern Conference leader. As you see, Coach Irk Russell looking on the field. He always looks worried, Delano. Yes, he does. He's <laughs> one of those uh, people he came 
from who else but Coach Vince Dooley, who is uh, worried about his game with Mississippi State. Sure enough, school. He has a lot to be worried about. He checking the time. And in motion comes Raymond Gross. Gross going to run with it. He finally gets some more room. He ducks out way of under a couple of people. He's going to find some room on the right-hand side, and he gets knocked out of bounds, and a flag is going to go down. Bill, let me show Junior you Junior Jackson, here. a little too much extracurricular activity. Let me show you what makes Georgia Southern such a good team. Watch the replay now. As you see Raymond Gross dropping back, he's thinking about passing it. He doesn't see anybody open. He misses a great move there to uh, lose the tackler. Now watch this block by Tony Smith, number 78, in the right hand of you. You may not be able to see it. There you see him on the ground. Tony Smith gets down. He's a big lineman, but he never quits doing his job, getting downfield and making the block. We'll get another 15 yards on the play because of the personal foul. Junior Smith made the tackle out of bounds. Charged with a personal foul. That moves the ball up to the 40-yard line. First down, Georgia Southern. Raymond, hand off to Gross. Not much there. Well, that time, Tim Winter, the defensive Boyd. guard for um, University of Tennessee Chattanooga, kind of got in the way there. He was just laying on the ground. He had been blocked down, and he kind of tripped Joe Ross up. Tony Boyk in on the stop there, six foot two senior, 252 pounder. So it's going to be second down and a long nine. Gross to pass. Fires it out in the flats. It's complete to Belzer. He has it. One, uh, no, one official came over and negated it. I thought it was out of bounds. That was a good call. Let's, let's see if it was or not. Here's Raymond Gross running left. He's looking for Tony Belzer on that same pass. He's been running all night. And we can't see it. Oh, he looks yeah, like he's, he's got that foot down, but he doesn't. Referee right on top of a great camera work. The there. one behind it called it complete initially. And that, of course, uh, got the uh, UTC fans uh, to erupt here. They didn't like it at all. <laughs> Can you blame them? <laughs> no, I It's I third down and nine. And we're in the split backfield. Raymond Gross is going to pitch it forward. That's going to go to um, Carl Miller. And Miller gets about five yards, maybe. Across the 45, but it's going to bring up a fourth down. To uh, Troy Boick ro wrote him up, uh, wrapped him up there. As the clock ticks inside the three-minute mark, so Georgia Southern's going to have to punt it away again, and Terry Harvin comes in to do the honors. Terry's a sophomore out of Keystone Heights, Florida. He gets one high, but not very long. It's good, but it's going to take a great bounce. It's going to be picked up at the 15-yard line, and boy, that was a mistake. He is clobbered Amundo. Knocked right down in there by, among others, uh, Steve Busoletti. Curtis Gordon also went on the stop. So it's going to be first and 10 for UT Chattanooga with the ball just inside the 15-yard line, just about two and a half minutes to go in the first half. Georgia Southern leading in this one 10 to nothing. UTC has looked great at points uh, at times, but they have not been able to score, and they've made some crucial mistakes, and Georgia Southern's come up with some great defensive efforts. The give is going to go on a little delay to a new man in the backfield there. Number 31, Derek McClendon has come in before Steve Busoletti comes in playing um, playing in there for Georgia Southern. McClendon the new faces on the field. Busoletti is a freshman. Six foot two, 235 pound freshman from Gainesville, Steve Bosoletti. He made a great play that time, be able to come off his block and stop that draw play that looked like he had good potential. He had great protection. Georgia Southern wants to keep UTC scoreless, of course. They have not had a point scored on them in the first half this season. As Patterson rolls to his right and throws right through the hands of Travis McNeil. Patterson, McNeil was looking around Elena like he thought somebody else was supposed to catch it. I, I 
don't know. I, he's had about three go right through his hands now. I think maybe Travis has got kind of a lick somewhere we haven't seen. And uh, <laughs> once you get you're throwing that ball in the middle, you're going to look around and kind of wonder if somebody's coming around and uh, who's breathing down my neck. You think somebody's called and threatened his family? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> 154 to go the first half. It's third down and about five, a little better than five. Patterson's got him in the eye. Back to pass. And he is going to be knocked down big time right in his face was Giff Smith. Giff Smith was right there, and he said, no, sir. Fought off the blocker. Did he do a great job of fighting that blocker off well, or what? Super. Look at him. Look Watch at him. This. Look at him. He keeps working. He keeps working. He's got him by that jersey. You're going down, Patterson. He brought down both of them. Yes, he did. <laughs> a super effort by Giff Smith, and his coach Russell would say, let's win one for the Gipper. <laughs> Smith back in. He could let her tonight punting. Gets it away. Long one downfield. Oglesby way back. Oglesby takes it to about the 37. Oglesby breaks to the outside, but he's not going to get much past the 40. And flags go down way back at the 35-yard line. Another flag goes down. Face mask, maybe. Matter of fact, Bill, I see three flags on the play. There are, there are three flags on the play. Maybe we'll see something on the replay here. Oglesby trying to bring it back. Yep, face mask right there by big number 15. And then, Bill, on the other side of the play, you had a personal foul. I think the kicker and one of the Georgia Southern players were kind of going. To, you're taught to give that kicker a rough time after, or the punter a rough time after he releases the ball. And uh, I think that's what the call is on Georgia Southern, probably a personal foul. What about the face mask? Is that what they're discussing? Curran Hoover was the one who um, committed that infraction. Bill, Georgia Southern came with an all-and-out block attempt. They sent just about everybody. Rodney Oglesby caught the ball back there. He was all alone. He did what he could, and he got about a couple of yards on that, uh, much to his credit. Matter of fact, it was a 50-yard punt, and he got five yards with no blocking at all. Did a great job, and Irks over on the sidelines. The officials are still discussing what to do here at this point because there were um, three flags on the play. Tony Belzer going to the sidelines, holding against Georgia Southern. Personal foul against UT Chattanooga. So they'll be offsetting. And what happens now? They'll give Georgia Southern the football. They will mark off the penalty one direction. It looks like 10 yards. Uh, okay. Well, whatever they decided to do, they've done it. <laughs> they went the one way 15 yards and the other way 15 yards. All right, I'll give you Boardwalk and Park Place <laughs> for the Reading Railroad and the utilities. Why not just leave the ball where it was, Bill, and okay, start the game instead of wasting all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once upon kind of a time, we world. used to just play the play over. Yeah, once upon a time. Oh, well. Georgia Southern has the ball at the 44-yard line, 46-yard line. Their own as Gross rolls right. Fires complete to Ross Warsham. Warsham at the 45-yard line inside UT Chattanooga territory. A pickup of about seven yards on the play as we tick inside the one-minute mark. And we're going to have to go to that two-minute offense. Marion Riggins is a guy who knocked him down. Well, Bill, Tony Belcher has been doing that out pattern where this time they hit the inside receiver, Ross Warsham, who was wide open. A good decision. Warsham now split wide to the left. Raymond going to keep it. Flag down. Raymond down at the 40. Well, Bill, what happened was Ross Worsham had went to the wrong side of the field, and Tony Belcher said, hey, Ross, you're not supposed to be over here. He sent him back over to the other side of the field, and Raymond Gross made a sophomore mistake. He should have checked to make sure that all his wide receivers were set. Ross Worsham had not gotten set, and the referee threw the flag immediately. Well, the penalty is going to go against Southern, and 36 seconds remain on the clock in the first half. We'll be talking with Frank Hook at halftime, the executive director of Georgia Southern Boosters. I want to thank also all of our uh, stations, uh, of course, uh, the folks watching on WJCL in Savannah, but we also have uh, viewers in Augusta and Macon tonight, and we thank those folks for being with us. Hope you're enjoying Georgia Southern football. They're up 10 to nothing with 31 seconds to go as Raymond Gross rolls to his right and fires way down to wide open. Tony Belzer, who's got it, and out of bounds at the 10-9-yard line. 
They're going to mark it just outside the 10 at about the 11. Well, Bill, this was a great offensive decision. Most of the game, Tony Belcher is doing an out route, but he hasn't been doing it kind of a, a straight out. He's been doing a cutback out. Well, this time, you can see Raymond Gross is going to drop back. And here's the play. I think we're going to look at it. Raymond Gross drops back. Tony Belcher does not do it out this time. Instead, he cuts infield and then cuts back out. And watch the catch. That's the wrong play. But Tony Belcher made a good catch. <laughs> That's the one Not before that. made a good catch, yeah. too. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> 25 seconds to go. First and 10 at the 11-yard line. Gross rolling to his right. Keeps it and gets just inside the 10 to about the 9 or 8-yard line. And the field goal unit comes charging onto the field or something's, something's changing. They're lining up. Do we have no timeouts? We must not have any timeouts. Mike Dallas comes in to kick a field goal. It's up. And it is good. Mike Dallas just gave Georgia Southern a 13 lead at halftime as the time expires. Incredible. How do you like and that? we'll be back. Okay, we're going to be uh, taking a look at it just one more time. We'll build a punt team. Or the, the kick team is coming in, and they're rushing around. They get the ball off. It's dead center perfect. Now, Tennessee Chattanooga made a mistake here. Tennessee Chattanooga knew that Georgia Southern obviously did not have any timeouts. Somebody should have just laid down on the field, as, as bad as it sounds. But they got back on defense quicker than I've ever seen anybody get back on defense. I don't think they realized what was going on, Delano. But at any rate, Mike Dallas with a 32-yard field goal has just given Georgia Southern a 13 to nothing lead going to the locker room at halftime. And Georgia Southern's defense still has not been scored on in the first half. We'll be back after this from your local stations with a score at half. Georgia Southern 13 from Chattanooga, Tennessee, in the foothills of the Smokies, or are we in the foothills of the Smokies? Where are we in the Smokies? So we're, some, we're somewhere in the Smoky Mountains, that's for sure. We have about six minutes before kickoff. We just had a tremendous performance from, uh, from the UT Chattanooga Band at halftime. We also want to introduce you to the Georgia Southern Campus. For those of you who might not be familiar with the college, or you just might want to be re-familiarized with it, uh, we'll take a look at uh, some information about Georgia Southern College in Statesboro. Georgia Southern, the most comprehensive senior college in the state of Georgia, is attractive, affordable, and home to high quality instruction and research. Best of all, it is an uncommonly caring school where the student's success as an individual is a major priority. A small college atmosphere with major college opportunities for learning are but two of the reasons for our success. Georgia Southern is committed to academic excellence as well as quality in all areas of the college experience. So there you have it, Georgia Southern College. Four minutes and 47 seconds to go just before halftime. The score is 13 to nothing in favor of Georgia Southern over UT Chattanooga. I always worry about those 13 uh, points, uh, Delato. You, you realize all of a sudden two touchdowns and you can be behind by a point after you've played so well. Well, that's true, but UT Chattanooga has to be going into the locker room at halftime. They had to be going in there thinking about it. They let that three points slip by one that time and uh they got to be feeling pretty bad right now. I don't know how they're going to come out. Georgia Southern will get the ball. The move will be set. Will be set on the first play. I'll From tell Germany. you, they've scared Believe you to me. death uh, with um, what they've been, uh, the way they've been able to move the football. Um, and you just figure that sooner or later they might break one of those things. Well, Daryl Streeter is a great kickoff returner. As I told you earlier, Coach Spurgeon, Coach Dot, we call him Dot Spurgeon, who is our super scout. He has been reporting on Daryl Streeter since. I was a sophomore. Daryl was a freshman back then. Daryl Streeter has a lot of speed, and he can break one at any moment. Yes, indeed. By the way, the guy that you saw coming out working over the players uh, just before during uh, during the ball games, and we've had several injuries we want to fill you in on as well, is uh, Dr. Bob Swint. Uh, he has joined the Irk Russell Lookalike Club. Uh, he has uh, shaved his head, and <laughs> Irk said what we do, the need to do now is get one more guy to do that and then have their picture taken and hang it in <laughs> front of a pawn shop. So at any rate, um, we do have some bad news to tell you about injuries. Bart Hughes, who was carried off the field on a stretcher, may have a fractured leg. He's in an air cast now. They won't know until they take x-rays, but they're afraid that his leg may be broken. Pray that it is not. 
as UT Chattanooga starts to come back on the field about three minutes before kickoff getting a good reception from the crowd. Taz Dixon has a sprained ankle. He is on crutches. He will not be back tonight. Whether or not his status is going to be for the Middle Tennessee game next week at uh, Murfreesboro, we'll just have to keep you posted on that. Both teams have, um, who else got hurt tonight? We have one more. Bill, uh, probably the worst injury or possible injury to speak of is quarterback Raymond Gross. Right. On that last play before the kicking team came in to make that last field goal Raymond Gross was hurt he injured his ankle you we saw him walking kind of gingerly on it earlier in the game well he hurt his ankle even worse and they won't know until he gets back on the field and can kind of jog around and see what's going on but uh, if he does go out Kim Burnett is a very capable backup without a doubt as far as statistics go in the first half both teams have eight first downs uh, rushing yardage, Georgia Southern has rushed 22 times for 90 yards uh, for Ch UT Chattanooga. They have rushed 21 times for 69 yards. Uh, UT Chattanooga has 44 yards passing to Georgia Southern's 107. And uh, Georgia Southern has lost 17 yards. UTC has lost 17 yards. Everything stands uh, pretty even uh, from that point of view. The return yardage, UTC minus four, and Georgia Southern nine. Uh, we've gone to the air uh, 14 times. Uh, George, well, let me take that back. Uh, UTC has tried to pass uh, 14 times. They've completed five of them with one interception. Georgia Southern's gone to the air eight times, ten times, completed eight, and have had no interceptions. So total offensive yardage, uh, we're talking about 113 yards for UTC and 197 for Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern has lost, um, has fumbled once, did not lose the fumble. So far, UTC has not fumbled. Both teams are back on the field now. We're getting ready for the second half. You see Coach Eric Russell bringing his team out. Big. Well, I tell you, we're still out cheering them, I think, Delano. The uh, Georgia Southern fans are still out cheering the, um, the ones from, uh, from UTC. It looks like quite a few of them piled in after the kickoff. Uh, Georgia Southern over there screaming. Boy, they're faithful fans, aren't they? I want to tell you, I can't say enough for our fans. Uh, they have just been absolutely incredible. And to the UTC folks who are watching in tonight, uh, I mean, if you're offended by us saying our and us, I apologize. I'm going to try to get out of that habit if at all possible. We're getting ready for the kickoff now. UTC is getting ready to kick it away. Bill, I just want to quickly mention, uh, we said how faithful the fans are for Georgia Southern. We do have some fans that couldn't make it today. Uh, Roy Aikens and the gang are at Pratt Hills Pond House back in Statesboro, Georgia. They've been very good to me, and they wanted me to mention them, and uh, you guys are bums for not coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I wanted to say hi to Josh down in Savannah, too, so how's that? Dennis Waters is getting ready to kick it away. And Carl Miller is deep for Georgia Southern, standing on the goal line. Also standing back there with him, Albert Hundley, among others. And this one's away. The second half is underway. It's going to be taken by the up man, Ernest Thompson, at about the 25. Ernest has got a big hole through the middle. Ernest across the 45-yard line. A short kick and a great run back by Ernest Thompson before Willie Ransby finally knocked him down. Well, Bill, Georgia Southern likes to use that up-the-middle return. They don't like to play around. And you see the blockers in there. Look at that great job of blocking there. And Ernest Thompson, who is no stranger to running in open field, does a good job all the way down to the 46-yard line of Georgia Southern. So all of a sudden, the UTC Chattanooga defense finds themselves, or the UT Chattanooga defense finds themselves working with a 54-yard field as Raymond comes out, and it looks like he's okay right now as he gets inside UTC territory down to about the 47-yard line. Tony Hill was the guy who wrapped him up just as he got across midfield. You know, Bill, it's no secret that Raymond Gross is a dangerous quarterback whenever he touches the ball. But I found Raymond Gross to be most dangerous when he cuts back against the grain. He gets a couple of people to miss him, and he cuts back on the field. There's nobody on that side, and he can go all the way. He is incredible. There is no doubt about it. We have definitely, you folks in Hinesville can definitely be proud of this kid because he's doing you proud. And in his sophomore year, the give is going to go to Joe Ross, and the ball pops loose, and there's the first fumble loss. Just when everything was looking great, Tony Bowick came up with a big fumble. Well, Bill, I'm not sure that, Ray, that uh, Joe Ross ever had control of the ball after Raymond Gross hands it to him. Let's 
check it out and see what happened. Raymond Gross hands it to him. He's making the read on the option. He's got it. Yes, he does have control, but somebody hits him with a helmet he right hit. in the ball. That's right. That helmet landed right on the football, and UTC is in business. And now Georgia Southern's defense is working with the 52-yard field. As Patterson, nope, they've changed quarterback. Nix is going to hand it off to Smith. Smith, or make that Lockhart. Lockhart's going to pull his way around for about uh, six or seven yards on the play. Rodney Oglesby finally runs him out of bounds, but it's going to be Stan Nix. The son of Coach Buddy Nix. In there, a six-footer, 181-pound sophomore to run the club. Patterson had not been doing an effective job in the first half, so they've changed. And a Coach Nix is the son of Coach Buddy Nix for right. Tennessee Chattanooga. So Nix running things out of the eye. The ball just at the 46-yard line of Georgia Southern. Pitchback is going to go to Cedric Smith. Smith across the 46. And he's finally knocked down by Darrell Hendricks up into there. After a gain of about a yard or so on the play, it's going to bring up third down and very okay, short yard. Okay. Third down, maybe a yard. In fact, they may want to measure it. Yeah, it's that close. Bill, this is quite scary. Whenever you bring in a quarterback who's been sitting on the bench, he's hungry. He's ready to come in and make himself look good. He's uh, been over there sweating it out, and now he's got a chance to play. So Stan Nix may come in here and uh, turn things around for Tennessee Chattanooga. Second half just underway, 13.49 to go the third period, and Georgia Southern's up by a 13 to nothing score, and they, are, have the, they missed the first down by about, oh, a millimicron. Bill, I can see Raymond Gross over there on the sidelines. He's still running and jogging on that foot, so it is causing him some problems. Hopefully he will be okay. Let us hope. Ken Burnett would be his backup. And Albert Huntley backs him up. The old saying, Delano, you always have to be ready. You never know when you're a play away from being in there, right? That's true. So Nix brings him up. He has third down in about a quarter of an inch. Gave it right straight up the middle. And not much running room. Daryl Hendricks stacks up Mr. Smith. And depending on where they spot it, he may not have made it. They just have the key, depending on where they spot it. If he gets a good spot, they made the first down. They want to measure it again. Or do they? They're going to bring on the chains one more time, yeah? Bill, it's a gorgeous night here in Tennessee, Chattanooga. The skies cleared up. Hurricane Gilbert went away. It has been nice. And they're going to stretch it out. Yeah, this time he made it by back. Good job, Pat. So the UT Chattanooga fans finally have something to cheer about. Ball resting just on the 43-yard line. There you see the mock cheerleaders. As Nix brings him up, split backfield. Nix to pass. Out there, knocked down by Oglesby. Lockhart was the intended receiver out there in the flats. And Oglesby came over and darn near made a nice interception, but he got it knocked down very well. Well, Bill, uh, it wouldn't have mattered anyway uh, as far as if Chattanooga would have caught the ball because uh -huh. they have a holding penalty. Yes, yes the did. yellow flag is down. The referee said, yes, you did. Hold, buddy. So the, uh, we're going to take the, yeah, we're going to take the penalty. You know, Bill, I don't know what it's worth, but every time Georgia Southern has faked a blitz and backed off, a big play has come about. Of course, Randall Boone intercepted the ball earlier in the game. That came off a fake blitz. I don't know if it's uh, confusing the quarterback for Tennessee Chattanooga or not. Have they done that in the past, Alino? Is that a... Yes, that's kind of to confuse the quarterback, and it's working very well. Draw play. It's going to get about five or six. Everett Sharp. He's going to stop it after Cedric uh, Smith had picked up all oh, about six yards, maybe. Smith. Maybe not even. Uh, uh, bring up second down. He picked up five. So it'll be second and 15. Ball just inside Georgia Southern Territory once again, this time at uh, resting on just shy of the 48-yard line. 13 to nothing is the score. 12 and a half minutes to go, second, third period, that is. 
as Nick wants to pass. And he's going to get away from a couple of guys, but uh, Gip Smith came in and grabbed him. And they blew the whistle and said forward progress was over. Sort of in the grasp, as they say in the NFL. Yeah, he was the in the grasp. Was? His knee may have also hit the ground. Let's watch Stan Nixon as he drops back. Here comes Gil Smith. He fights off the blocker there. He comes in. Let's watch Nixon see if his knee hits the ground. There it goes. He hits the ground, yes. And then he gets back up. Did he hit the ground? Like he hit that's, the ground to me, did Well, the officials thought so. Okay. <laughs> well, that's all that counts. That's right. <laughs> what do we know up here? They're closer to it than we are. Just inside 12 minutes to go, third period. Nix flares it out to Lockhart. Got a little running room. Rodney Oglesby is going to run him out of bounds again. And once again, that brings up fourth down and long, long yardage as Billy Smith, leading punter in the Southern Conference, comes in to punt it away. He'll be standing on about his 30, 35 yard line. Rodney Oglesby will be back in single safety. Oglesby in for Taz Dixon, who is out for the night. And Smith gets it away. Oglesby will field it at about a 10-yard line and gets decked at the 12. There was no place to go. So it's Georgia Southern's ball, first and 10. They lead by a score of 13 to nothing with 11 minutes and 3 seconds to go in the third period. We'll be back after this network commercial timeout. Eleven minutes, three seconds to go in the third period. Georgia Southern up by a score of 13 to nothing here at Chamberlain Field in Chattanooga, Tennessee. As a turnover for Georgia Southern so far has not hurt them. They have the ball back first and 10 at the 12. After a 39-yard kick and a two-yard return, Raymond Gross back to pass, decides he's going to run it. He can get past a good block here, and he does it. Uh, he could have picked up some pretty good yardage, but he does get back about three yards to the 15-yard line. Tony Hill was uh, fought off his blocker and decked Mr. Gross just shy of the 15-yard line, so it's not going to be a quite a three-yard pickup. It'll be second down and eight. Well, Bill, that's where Raymond Gross is most dangerous when he drops back and can't find an open receiver. <laughs> the worst thing to do is cover your receivers because he's going to take off, and he almost got out of that uh, mess. He sure did. Uh, Tony Hill, just an expert at fighting off blocks, and he's six foot seven for one thing, a sophomore. Thompson in motion. Gross back to pass again. Going to fire it out in the flats to Tony Belzer, but uh, but he was. That's a tough pass to throw. He's running full speed. And Belzer fell down but the ball was way too low. Mike Lohman was over to cover, but really didn't matter. Raymond Gross is uh, 8 of 11 passing, a pretty good percentage there. He's going to bring up a third down as Donnie Allen checks out and Ross Warsham checks back in at wide receiver. Big third down play here. What else is new? <laughs> Gross on the quarterback draw. He almost got away, but not quite. So we're going to fool him with that one, but it didn't work. Tyrone uh, Harris was the guy who wrapped it up, big number 59. And so that brings up a fourth down. So the defensive struggle continues as Terry Harbin comes in, standing back at his four yard line to punt this one away. Gets one off and hits at the 50 and goes out of bounds, and I don't think that's what he wanted to do. The ball actually hit at about the 48 and went right out of bounds, so UT Chattanooga is working with a 48-yard with a field after a 28-yard punt from Terry Harvin. Well, just under 10 minutes to play in the third period. Georgia Southern with a 13 to nothing lead. And so far, in three games this season, nobody has scored on the Georgia Southern defense in the first half, which is an incredible statistic for a rebuilding defense, Delano. Yes, they are, Bill. <laughs> the give from Nix. Going to go outside to Streeter. Streeter's got running room down to about the 35-yard line. He's finally run out of bounds by Terry Young and Randy Rodney Oglesby. Darrell Streeter. Big yardage. So as we take a look at this on the replay, Stan Nix takes the hand, hands it off there to Daryl Streeter. He's a good one. I told you he's a speed burner. He gets around that corner, and uh, Georgia Southern is lucky he didn't go all the way. 
really are. He just ran out of field there over on the side, and uh, Terry Young was able to come up, and of course, Rodney Oglesby. Give the streeter is going to go once again. He's not going to get much further. <laughs> he, he ricocheted off a couple of guys <laughs> before he was finally knocked down. In there by, among others, um, Tim Durden. And also Darren Alford. It was finally Darren Alford as you watch the ball, as you watch it again. He, he pops off Michael Berry. Mike Berry. He's running, keeps his feet moving, but uh, too many Georgia Southern shirts around. Knocked him right into Alford. Nick's back to pass again, right over the middle, way overthrown. That was intended for hooks out in the flats. And let me tell you, brother, uh, if that ball would have been thrown well, it could have been six points because the defender out there, Mashawn Sims, slipped on the play. That had six points written all over it. Thank goodness it was high. Yeah, Nick's overthrew his man. 9.06 to go. Third period. 13 to nothing Georgia Southern, but UT Chattanooga has mounted another threat. It's going to take another good defensive effort. Third down and about nine yards to go from the 30-yard line. The give in the middle. No place to go for Streeter. Darren Alford got it immediately. And the Boo Birds have come out in Chattanooga as Michael Berry also was in there to wrap him up. Well, Bill, that was sort of a delayed trap, stop, trap option. The reason it's come out is because uh, probably the fans wanted to see the ball aired out on that play. They mm -hmm. kind of ran a trap option, and Georgia Southern was waiting on it. They must have knew what was coming. Dennis Waters is going to come in to attempt a 47-yard field goal. He missed one earlier, but this one is right on line, and it's good. Seven yard field goal attempt for Dennis Waters who gets closer and closer. And we're going to take this time out with the score Georgia Southern 13 and UT Chattanooga 3 for a local spot. 23 seconds to play in the third period. Georgia Southern's lead has just been cut to 10 points on a 47 yard field goal by Dennis Waters who is now only four field goals away from being the all-time UTC field goal champion. That scoring play, scoring drive, went 16 yards in five plays, ending in a 47-yard field goal and consumed a minute and 27 seconds as we fumble it at the goal line, but it's picked up by Carl Miller. Miller's got big room. Miller up to the 40, across the 42. Marion Riggins finally knocked him down, but after not after a 42-yard pickup, after he had bobbled the ball on the goal line. Well, Bill, more times than not, when a returner drops the kickoff and picks it right back up, he is going to have a big return. I'll tell you why, because it spreads the defense out as they come down on that kickoff team, and you can see it left a gaping hole, and Carl Miller was just one block away from breaking it. A keeper, but there are flags all over the place and whistles blowing and... <laughs> Sean Ganey may have moved a little too soon and we have a UTC player injured on the play. At the half, Pittsburgh leading Ohio State 28-3. I believe this is a halftime score. Oklahoma 28 to 10 over Arizona. No, Bill, I think at that's the a final score. Oklahoma beat Arizona 28 to 10. And with this injury down there, let's take this uh, time out. With Georgia Southern up by a score of 13 to 3 with 8-12 to go in the third period. Let's go for a network commercial. We'll be back after this. Back at Chamberlain Field, Bill Edwards along with Delano Little. 13 to 3 is the score in favor of Georgia Southern with 8-12 to go in the third period as they bring Junior Jackson off the field. Uh, the first injury for the night, uh, unfortunately, they're, uh, well, I don't mean it's unfortunate it's the first injury for the night for the UTC um, moccasins, but um, this is their first injury of the night. Junior Jackson is limping off slowly from the field but going off under his own power. By the way, Georgia has taken a 21-14 lead over Mississippi State in the third period over at Starkville tonight. NC State has a 7-6 lead over Wake Forest in the first period. Auburn's having a little trouble with Kansas, but they are managing to squeak by right now in the third period, 49-7. I said 49-7, Auburn over Kansas, but what a surprise. 
All right, it's going to be first down after Georgia Southern's gotten penalized and about 13 or 14 yards to go as Raymond Gross is going to take it on the corner and he's going to get that first down. <laughs> he's going to keep going after the first down inside UTC territory down to about the 38-yard line and went to the strong side of the field, Delano, and just had, game, just had yardage galore. Well, Bill, if we can take a, a look at the replay. Once again, Raymond Gross puts pressure on the defensive back on the right side. Now, the defensive back doesn't know whether to come up. As you see him, take the hand off there. Now, he doesn't know whether to take Raymond Gross or not. He, he doesn't take Raymond Gross, and Raymond Gross takes advantage of it. Look at him doing some nifty moves down. Bill, call it jitterbugging, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good fake to Gary Miller, too, and Gary pulled that one off well, drawing off a lot of defenders. And their give is going to be to Gary this time, and he is good for about three or four yards. Kind of reminds me of uh, Alan Amici from years ago. They used to say he was um, good for a yard. You now Gary's that, that way. Cedric Taylor brings him down. But Gary's going to pick up about four or five yards, make it three yards on the play for a second down and seven. He's good for about four or five yards, Gary yeah. Miller is. Yeah. And he isn't very fast. He just picks his holes very carefully. Averaged, I believe, five and a half yards a carry last year. Playing yes, I think that was his first uh, carry on the night. Yes, it was. First time Gary's gotten the football. First of many if he keeps this up. The three yards on the play, second down and seven. As Raymond's going to keep it. Goes around the right end. He's got a little room there. It closes down quickly. But he's close. Let's see how close he got to a first down as Marion Riggins is the first guy to get there. And boy, he's still, still kind of favoring Theron Harris, and Marion Riggins knocked him down. He's still kind of favoring that ankle, isn't he? Yes, he is. There you see Brad Bernard. You saw Brad Bernard help Raymond Gross up off the ground. That's their precious jewelry. <laughs> hey, Raymond, come on, baby. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, we want to alert you to um, the alumni associations around the state of Georgia that are going to be forming again for Georgia Southern just as soon as we get some time. One in the Augusta area that we know of, and here's a big hole for Ernest Thompson as he gets a first down, bulldozing his way across the 25 near the 20-yard line. Marion Riggins was the guy who stopped him. You'll see it again. And Bill, if you ask me a question, you see the replay here, Ernest Thompson taking it right up the middle, a gaping hole there for him, does a good job running. Now, if you ask me a question and I give you a silly answer, it's because I cannot hear you. <laughs> I can't hear you either we, most of the time. Our Delano. mics are up very <laughs> high up here, and there's a lot of crowd noise. I understand. Gibb is going to go to Thompson. Fumble, and UTC's got it again. Big mistake. Raymond didn't let it go, or what was the deal on that, Delano? He didn't I'm let sorry, it go Bill, excuse me, what, what was that now? He didn't let the ball go in time, or what? Well, in that option, you have to make the read. The quarterback has to be the, the sole person who makes the decision whether to hand the ball off to the fullback, the dive back, or to pull it and take it around the end. That time, they probably got confused, and the ball comes out, and Tennessee Chattanooga has it going the other way, unfortunately, for Georgia Southern. Mitchell Terry was a guy who recovered it for UTC, and they have the ball on the 24-yard line. The pitch back is going to go to Streeter. Streeter around the right side. Nice yardage over there. Darrell Hendricks stops him after about an eight-yard pickup, though. It's going to be second down and short, about two yards to go. And, Bill, uh, this is bad news for Georgia Southern. They're letting Tennessee Chattanooga back into the game emotionally, and once you do that, it's hard to stop. That's right. That's when it looked like uh, things were going along smoothly. Into the eye. Stan Nix pitches it back to Streeter. Streeter goes around the right side. A couple of guys hit him. Gets up, gets first down yardage across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. Another first down there from Michael Berry, knocking him down. 5.19 to go, third period. Lizzie, Georgia Southern with a precarious 10-point lead. A quick pitch to Darrell Streeter there. He turns it up. All he needs was a couple of yards, and he gets it. And Tennessee Chattanooga has the first down. Michael Berry on the stop. First down for UTC. Back to pass. Nix still looking, being chased, still being chased, and finally dragged down from behind, losing, what, about a yard on the play, maybe, as Giff Smith. Great speed for a big guy. 
Bill, let me show you what happens when you stand around the ball. If you're a defensive player or an offensive player, for that matter, as you see, Nix is forced out of the pocket. He rolls right. Now watch Everett Sharp, the outside linebacker for Georgia Southern. He's number 37. If we can keep that replay going, watch Everett Sharp. Watch him, watch him. He's standing around. Okay, he's going to stop right there. Watch this. Boom, hello. I see you. <laughs> Second down and 11. A loss of a yard on the play, thanks to the great play by Giff Smith. And a pass way overthrown once again. This time intended out there in the flats for number 80 to ride him. Mashawn Sims was the one who broke it up. Quentin Alford is who that was intended for. Well, Bill, that time it was like a little quick slant. And uh, Tennessee Chattanooga is intent on spreading out that Georgia Southern secondary. Third down and 11. Nix has to pass now. Gets away from it. Two guys. Giff Smith may have him again. Knocks him down. Giff Smith does it one more time. And Bill, there should have been a penalty flag thrown on that play right there. It was kind of some bad sportsmanship by Tennessee Chattanooga. Let's take a look as Stan Nix drops back. They were forced to throw it, and Georgia Southern knew it. Here comes Giff Smith as he fights off his block. He's got him. He hooked him. He almost causes a fumble there. And uh, Stan Nix almost throws the ball and makes a bad play. Shane Maxwell was the one who really forced that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no. No. Georgia Southern did not rough the kicker. Oh, yes, they did. Oh, boy. We're going to be assessed a penalty on the play here. And Chattanooga will get the ball back. We're going to take this time out for a local commercial with a score 13 to 3 and 3 minutes and 23 seconds to go. We'll be right back. Boy, Georgia Southern's going into their self-destruct mode here all of a sudden. We just had, um, we just got penalized 15 yards for roughing the kicker. Of course, that gives Chattanooga the ball back. And also, uh, we just jumped off sides. Steve Busoletti jumped off sides. We've had nine penalties for a total of 75 yards so far tonight. That hurts. Coach Russell last, will not be happy. The last two, oh, I bet they're having to put Irk in a straight jacket over there, <laughs> put him in some shaved ice or something as Nix brings him out. Nix is going to give it off to Cedric Smith. Smith has got good yardage down to about the 45-yard line inside Georgia Southern Territory and knocked out of bounds by Everett Sharp. And not before he picks up some first down yardage. Bill, that's not static if you hear that. That's not static. That's me smelling trouble. Georgia Southern is really working themselves into a bad position here. They're getting Tennessee Chattanooga fired up. The fans are getting back involved in the game. And uh, it could be a long rest of the night for Georgia Southern. Yeah, Georgia, we ought to have the ball and go in the other direction. Instead, it's down to Georgia Southern's 45-yard line. In the eye. Man in motion right. Nix is going to give it to Lockhart. Lockhart's got big yardage once again. No close to a first down near the 35-yard line. For Randall Boone can stop him. Well, you see, Bill, Nick hands it off to Lockhart. He doesn't have a very big hole, but just enough to get through. And then he breaks the tackle. Daryl Hendricks misses it right there. Randall Boone has to come up and stop him from his strong safety position. And strong safeties are not supposed to be making tackles on dives. No, they're not. Two minutes, 22 seconds to go the third period. Georgia Southern by 10. The give is going to go in the middle. And, boy, I want to tell you, decking him right away is Patrick Parr. And Mr. Smith had nowhere to go. In fact, he lost about a yard or two on the play. They're going to mark it back at the 38-yard line. A loss of two. Bring it up third down and three. Bill, uh, Patrick Parr has done a good job filling in for James Carter. We haven't mentioned it yet, but James Carter went up to Atlanta today. To, he was scheduled to have surgery done on his ankle. They had thought it was bone chips. It turned out to be infected. So he may be out for longer than two weeks. Oh, great. Well, the best of luck. Wild man, pull through, okay? In motion right. Nix is going to give it off to Lockhart. Lockhart's got no place to go. It's going to bring up a fourth down again. And the Georgia Southern defense has managed to save themselves one more time as Michael Berry wraps up 
Andre Lockhart. Once again, Patrick Parr was right in there. He didn't make the tackle, but he was very instrumental in forcing the play right into the other Georgia Southern players who were waiting. As You're you see, see it again. Patrick Parr busts through the line. He almost makes the tackle right there, but it slows them down enough, and they make a good tackle. And the cheers you hear are for UTC going for it on fourth down and four. Fourth and four as Mix brings them up. The ball just at the 39-yard line. Mix the pass. Fires over the middle. Incomplete. Harry Young came over to break that one up intended for Jeff, I believe it's Jardine. And Terry Young goes off the field limping, but boy, did he come up with a defensive play of the night so far. Yes, he did, Bill, and uh, it, it was very close. It could have been yes, caught either way. Um, it looked like Terry may have got his arm in there a little early, but uh, thank goodness I'm not down on the field, That's right? That's right. Good. They're closer. <laughs> Delano, I thought I explained that to you earlier. They're closer <laughs> to it than we are. Georgia Southern back on the attack. The pitch goes outside to Frank Johnson. Johnson is going to get about eight yards up across near midfield to about the 48-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. Mike Lohman and Junior Jackson combined to knock him out. Jackson back in there after going out with an injury. And that's the first time we see Frank Johnson carry the ball tonight. He receives it on the pitch. Frank Johnson has also been plagued by injury. Georgia Southern is really having a tough time with injuries so far this season. He really has, yeah. And uh, Frank was out most of last season with injuries, so that was, I believe, the first time he's been in the ball game tonight. He's out once again, and Ernest Thompson has checked back in the ball game. Second down and about one, and Raymond wants to run the little quarterback draw and slips on that wet turf out there. It's still real slippery on that field, Delano. As a matter of fact, Bill, and I should mention Frankie Johnson. Uh, Frankie Johnson has probably had more injuries than anybody else on Georgia Southern's team. Could even beat me. <laughs> <laughs> you had a few, huh? I had a few. And the officials want to take a timeout to come over to the sideline and talk to one of the coaches for UTC or something. I don't know what they're, what the big deal is. Scott, just tell me. What are, what are they doing? Well, there's a Her player, player down on the field, number 45. Oh. Jackson again. Oh, okay. good. He played very well for Tennessee Wait, Chattanooga. He was shaking up down there on the sideline on that last please. play. I didn't even That's see that. Program. 22 That's seconds left in the third period. And Georgia Southern has um, managed to dodge a few bullets in this quarter. They had a field goal scored on them. They've been held scoreless. And we have a third down and four. Looks like a third and a long four. Boy, I tell you, that four yards looks like a long way from here, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Rolling out to his left. He'll have some room. Nice block as he gets the first down. Good block out there that was thrown by Gary Miller as time expires in the third quarter. That's the end of three periods. We're three quarters of the way through this one with Georgia Southern up by 10, 13 to 3. And we'll be back after this from your local TV station. Back at Chamberlain Field for the final quarter of play. Georgia Southern by 10, 13 to 3. And it has been a wild and wacky ball game. UTC simply has not been able to take advantage of opportunities, but you can uh, thank the Georgia Southern defense for that. They have come back when time uh, expired, and boy, there's going to be flags going down and whistles blowing. Somebody did something too soon somewhere. Well, Bill, Georgia Southern jumped off uh, to start off the play, and the referee didn't realize it. And then uh, to boot, they, they jump off again. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure. Two okay. They had to back them up 10 yards. <laughs> Ernest Thompson made a bad move, and uh, Tony Smith also made a bad move up there on the uh, tackle up there on the line. Get from Waycross, but he has been doing a spectacular job. Those linemen really don't get the credit they deserve. Let's run them down. It's Brad Bernard, uh, junior from Jacksonville. Tony Smith, a junior from Waycross. Well, we we want to Waycross. Uh, want to welcome our Waycross viewers. Dennis Franklin, the All-American center from uh, Loganville, big senior. As you watch it again, see him jump off sides there, just on the right side. Poor linemen, you never find out what their names are until they do something wrong. Right. right? <laughs> Poor guys. Sean Ganey, number 51, a junior from Hinesville. Sammy Twiggs, number 50, a senior from North Augusta, South Carolina. Welcome to the folks from Augusta and North Augusta with us on the broadcast tonight. As Raymond Gross rolls to his right on first and about 12, first and 15. And great Raymond's going to get it back to about the original line of scrimmage to five yards on the play. And a little too much extracurricular activity after the play on at number 38, Willie Greenway. And I believe that's going to cost, uh, cost them about five or ten yards. So Georgia Southern may get a first down out of this. 
Well, Bill, if uh, we take a look at the replay, let me show you what the offensive back for Georgia Southern has to do. Look at Ernest Thompson out there leading the play. Look at that block. He lays down a roll block. Oh. They have to practice that, oh, say, about 30 times a day going out there. And it's not fun, but somebody's got to do it. And I tell you, they do a spectacular job. There you go. So a 10-yard uh, penalty has been assessed. Up to the 32-yard line is where it's put it, and that's going to give us a first down, give Georgia Southern a first down. It's first and 10, Georgia Southern. According to Gene Crawford, the director of the Alumni Georgia Southern uh, Association, the Metro Atlanta area, Tuesday night at 6 o'clock at the, um, uh, let's see, if that's at the Radisson Inn on I-75, uh, is going to have a meeting. As Raymond Gross rolls to his left, fires down complete, down there to Ross Warsham. Down there, he got it at the 24-yard line. Marion Riggins there to stop him, but that's going to be a pickup of, uh, it's going to be very close to a first down, about nine, eight yards on the play. It'll be second down and two as you watch it again. Well, Bill, Ross Worsham is not the big play receiver. That goes to Tony Belter. Ross Worsham picks you up 10 yards. He'll pick you up 15 yards, uh, kind of nickel and dime you to death, and he does a good job of it and gets down low. You have to practice that in, uh, in practice, catching that ball low, and he does Good job of it there. That was spectacular. Perfect. Anyway, the Radisson Inn on I-75 uh, in, uh, at Mill Road in Atlanta. The Georgia Alumni and Georgia Southern Alumni Association Tuesday night at 6. As Raymond rolls to his right, wants to pass again to the end zone. The Felter is out of bounds. Just over the end line. Belzer made a beautiful catch down there. But oh, not quite. Well, that time, Bill, you know Tony Belcher's been doing that little out pattern on the sidelines, and he's really eaten up Tennessee Chattanooga all night with that. Well, that time, they bit on it, but it was a fake. Tony Belcher turned back, and then he turned around and went upfield, and he was wide open down the sideline. Raymond Gross dropping back here. There's Tony Belcher faking. Look at him in the corner of the end zone. Yes, he's got him beat now, and all you have to do is get it to him. Just lay it up for Tony Belcher to go under. Look, it's great camera work. Oh, my goodness, nice. he almost gets in. But if he could have held onto the bar, it would have yeah, been a touchdown. Just didn't have possession as his line hit, uh, foot hit that line at the end. Georgia Southern fans didn't like it, but here comes Gross around the corner. Doesn't have much, but he gets very close to a first down. He may have enough yardage for it. Yeah, and that's it's Terry Mitchell knocks him down. And first down, Georgia Southern. Coach Russell believes, when in doubt, you don't punt, you run the option. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to Raymond Gross <laughs> and run the option. I remember Coach Russell ran a play. One time it was third and 30, and Coach Russell sent in the option, and we said, what are you, crazy coach? Well, and we got a first down off of it. <laughs> I thought they signaled first down, but they didn't. Um, they did signal first down, but Tennessee wants a measurement. UTC wants a measurement. Okay. So they'll bring the chains over. We'll measure. 13 minutes, 32 seconds to go in the, in the ball game. And sure enough, Tennessee and Chattanooga does not so have the first down. Uh, excuse me, Georgia Southern does not have the first down just by a couple of inches. I have a feeling we're going to go for it down here. You folks in Augusta, Thursday night on the 22nd at 6 o'clock at Evans High School in Columbia County, just off I-20, will be a meeting of the Georgia Southern Alumni Association. They want to get these things started. Dr. Nicholas Henry, new president of Georgia Southern, wants to get these alumni associations active again. So in Augusta, Thursday night, the 22nd at 6 o'clock at Evans High School in Columbia County, just off I-20. Georgia Southern, fourth down and a foot. Lined in the power eye. The give is going to go to Ernest Thompson. He has it as he slices off the right side. Tennessee Chattanooga says he does not have it. <laughs> and now you get your proverbial pointing the other way. Yeah. I thought he had it, but again, whether or not he gets a good spot. Attendance for tonight's ball game, 8,717. Not bad considering what the weather was earlier. We thought maybe they might be 17. Well, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> when it was pouring down, so we're going to measure it again. Uh, uh, at least we didn't have the problems that uh, Texas A&M and Alabama had. They didn't even play. And they didn't make it. Well, that's a timeout on the field with the score, Georgia Southern 13 and UTC 3. Let's pause for these network messages. <laughs>
Greg, you be the judge on this play, whether or not uh, Georgia Southern got a bad spot. The give is going to go to Ernest Thompson. He's usually good for at least a yard or two. We had to go only about an inch or so. Well, they do hit him awfully hard and knock him back. And so it's going to be Georgia Southern um, going back to the defense. How much more bad luck can the Eagles endure tonight? As Brad Nix still in there, gives it off to Streeter, and Streeter still gets those big yards as he explodes across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Stan Nix in the ballgame for uh, still quarterbacking. Rodney Oglesby finally gets Streeter down after a pickup of about eight yards on the play. Second down and two. Ball resting just on the hash mark, the near side of the field. Well, the Georgia Southern defense has been tested time and time again. They have to hold up one more time. Still plenty of time in this one. 12 minutes and 50 seconds. As the give is going to go to Streeter again. Streeter getting wrapped up. And he is smashed down initially by Daryl Hendricks. And then Everett Sharp came in to give him some assistance. He got maybe a yard on the play. By the way, you folks in the Macon area, the Georgia Alumni Association is going to be meeting there at uh, on October the 25th at 6 o'clock at the um, Ibis restaurant, I believe, on uh, Riverside Drive in Macon. IBIS, is that right? Uh, at any rate, all alumni are invited. That's in the Macon area. The Georgia Southern Alumni Association will be meeting at the Ibis or Ibis, I guess it's Ibis restaurant, on Riverside Drive in Macon. Earlier we told you the Augusta area, um, Evans High School, this Thursday, the 22nd of September at 6 o'clock is where they'll be meeting. Ball just shy of a first down, so it'll be third down for the Moccasins, and they have about a foot or so to go. Just under 12 and a half minutes to play in the ball game. And if you folks around the metro Atlanta area are listening, you're going to be meeting at the Radisson Inn on I-75 at um, Harold Mill Road in Atlanta this Tuesday, the 20th, at 6 o'clock. Pitchback's going to go to Streeter. Streeter, first down, and more. As he's dragged down by Terry Young, as he gets close to the 40-yard line. Well, Bill Streeter is known as a speed burner, but right now he is running very tough for Tennessee Chattanooga. UTC trying to make up 10 points and more here with 12 minutes to go. The Takes pitch the pitch back. here, and he, he looks. You can see him looking around. Where's my hole? Where's my hole? He breaks Terry Young's tackle right there, and he keeps driving his feet. Look at him. He's turning those feet. A great effort by Daryl Streeter. Terry wouldn't let go, though, and finally got him down as Nix goes back to pass and is going to be clobbered by Patrick Parr. Parr came through there and just knocked him down big time to bring up second down and about 16 yards. Loss of about six yards on the play. Back to the 33-yard line. A lot of good defensive effort there. You saw Everett Sharp jump up and throw his hands up. That is very essential. It keeps the quarterback from seeing downfield, and that made him uh, take the ball down and enable Patrick Parr to get in and get that sack. No matter how this one comes out, you've got to take your hat off. You have to take your hat off to the defense. They have come up with some big plays, and they've done it with a lot of reserves and a lot of new faces as Gibbs Smith comes in and puts the pressure on, completes a streeter. Streeter's going to get away from a couple of guys, but not enough. He doesn't even get back to the... Gets about, gets about four yards on the play. Randall Boone was in on the stop, as well as Rodney Oglesby to knock him down after about a four-yard gain, so it's going to be third down and 11, maybe even 12. Well, Everett Sharp had to be kicking himself that time. He read the play perfectly, and then he missed the tackle. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way that happens sometimes. You get so excited. I guess it's like the receiver that starts to run before he catches the ball when he's oh, wide don't open. Don't talk about that. He okay. Shivers. I'm sorry. <laughs> In case you don't know, Postolino was a standout receiver for Georgia Southern. In the first uh, four I, years of the program. I stood out all right, Bill. Nix. <laughs> Nix trying to run. Nowhere to go. Dragged down from behind by Darren Alford. At about the line of scrimmage, he got, well, he got a couple of yards. Back to the original line of scrimmage. And it's fourth down and nine. Stan Nix is being forced to pass, and Tennessee Chattanooga is not having very much luck doing this. He is being forced out of the pocket just about every play. Great defensive effort by Georgia Southern. They have been spectacular. I tell you, that defense has been incredible as Dennis Waters comes in to kick it away. Again, he's the leading punter in the Southern Conference, standing at his 28-yard line. 
Away she goes. Nice high punt as it starts to get a little foggy around here. It's going to take a uh, bounce back for Georgia Southern. Comes back uh, to about the 37-yard line before Andre Lockhart downs it there. A 23-yard punt with nine third minutes and 39 seconds to play. Georgia Southern 13, UTC 3. We'll be back after these local commercials. One. From Chamberlain Field in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Georgia Southern with nine minutes and 39 seconds to tick off the clock and try to keep possession of that football as long as they can, keep it away from UT Chattanooga. And the object, of course, Delano is to at least get a field goal here, but of course the ideal is the touchdown. Yes, it is. Uh, Georgia Southern has to be thinking six points right now, and you can believe they're going to air it out here. And I, know I just have a feeling they're going to air it out on this drive. And the folks at home <laughs> say, tell us something we don't. <laughs> Bill, let me mention real quickly, Vera Bland and Lucy Bolin, I hope they're listening out there. They are two very lovely ladies. They are in the nursing home at the Savannah Square. All right. Lynn Bland wanted me to mention them, and we certainly welcome them to the game. I want to thank all the Martin Ansley folks here who um, always help us out with these uh, and are very big supporters of Georgia Southern as Raymond Gross is going to keep it on a keep her around the right side. Knocked out of bounds as he gets very close to midfield at about the 47-yard line. Jackie Wilson at uh, Washington, that is. <laughs> yeah, Jackie was not singing out there tonight. And Bill, before that play, Georgia Southern only had two first downs. This half, that just gave them three. So they've been kind of stymied. Uh, they a lot of mistakes have. also for Georgia Southern. It has been a scoreless second half for Georgia Southern. Fortunately, they had 13 points to fall back on. UTC has kicked a field goal. That's the way we stand with just over nine and a half minutes to go in this one. 13 to three, Southern. Raymond fumbles the snap but falls right on top of it. And Bill, even before we can get the word mistake mm -hmm. out of our mouth, there's yes. another one. You don't suppose we jinxed him or anything, do you? You know, in high school, when we used to fumble the ball from the snap, they used to make you stay after practice and snap it about 20 times until you got it right. And you had to do it perfectly. And I know Raymond Gross did it because we played at the same high school. Brad Winston yes, did in high school, Georgia. Say hello to all the people in high school. Coached by a legend, right? Coach Clipper Johnson, one of the greatest. Isn't that the truth? Raymond's going to change the signal here at the line of scrimmage. He's going to give it off to Gary Miller. Miller's got a little running room as he plows his way across the midfield there. And Junior Jackson wraps him up after about three yards. Bill, let's take a look at this. On replay, Gary Miller is perfect for making something out of nothing. He really there was is. really nothing there, uh, no hole or anything, but he just kept churning his feet, kept churning his feet. Look at him taking the ball. The blocking really isn't there on this play, but look at him. He's, he's fighting in there. Yeah. He is one heck of a ball player. It's the old, it's the old, I didn't like uh, the Alan Amici for the Baltimore Colts. Just put your head down and barrel on through. Taking Get a three, up. baby. Get a three yards, baby. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Raymond's going to roll out to the right. First down. Across the 40-yard line. Goes diving inside the 40 to about the 39-yard line. Maybe his junior Jackson trips him up there. Well, Bill, one of the most important things about this drive is not only Georgia Southern coming close to getting some points on the board, but they are also killing that clock. It's down to 8.01. As you see, Raymond Gross hit that corner and pick up some good yardage. Another first down for Georgia Southern on this drive. Clock starts again under eight minutes. 13 to three, Georgia Southern. They're driving. Thompson in motion. Raymond's gonna keep it. He dives in there for two or three tough ones. <laughs> I do mean tough. <laughs> we're right in front of the Lions. Talk then. about that uh, Raymond Gross being hurt at uh, halftime. He hasn't showed it at all here in the second half. He's come out. He's running. He's cutting. He looks like a little deer out there, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Hill was the guy who got him. He picked up. He still picked up three yards. Second down, and you see the uh, UTC players sitting there on the sidelines. Not a happy bunch at this point. Number 80 for Tennessee Chattanooga, Tony Hill is coming off uh, limping. He plays linebacker for them, and he's done a very good job tonight, so that's going to hurt them. I don't know how long he will be out. Second down and seven. Gross keeping. Dives inside, going to bring up third down and probably about three. He's picked up 
Maybe four yards on the play. Maybe maybe four. Terry Mitchell was the guy that got him. There are um, an enormous number of uh, Georgia players on the um, on the UTC team. In fact, they have more Georgia players than Tennessee players. Huh. As you see, Eric Russell pacing the sidelines. Terry Terry Mitchell. Odd. Terry Mitchell, for example, is from Decatur, a junior guy that just made the stop. Third down and four. Back to pass as Raymond Gross avoids a tackle, but he didn't avoid it enough as he gets knocked down by Junior Jackson, who was coming on that one. He smelled that one big time. Almost missed Raymond, but he got just enough of that jersey to knock him down, and I don't know if they're going to try a field goal here or not. No, it looks like a punt. You see yeah. Raymond Gross here on the replay as he takes the ball. Here comes Junior Jackson from nowhere. He looks like, oh, goodness, where are you coming from, Junior? And uh, he kind of slips, loses his footing yeah. there. And Junior Jackson has had a very good ball for Tennessee Chattanooga. We've called his name quite a few times. Yeah, so. they've taken him out twice for injuries. What? <laughs> he keeps coming back. The indestructible <laughs> man is Terry Harvin standing at uh, his 45-yard line, getting ready, trying to draw UTC off sides, I think. And now Southern wants to call a timeout. And, and somebody had 12 players on the field, like maybe us. I think it Georgia was Georgia Southern, Southern yeah, and before I'm we got a penalty. <laughs> right, and Bill Michael West, number 28, he's responsible for uh, counting the teams, and he did a good job there. Okay, we're going to pause for this message from your local stations with the score 13 to 3 in favor of Georgia Southern with 5.41 to go. And there you see Chief Nakahoma or uh, score a touchdown or something there as Terry Harvin punts it away for Georgia Southern and QTC is just going to let it go and it bounces on the one yard line and right into the end zone. Not exactly what we had in mind, but with five and a half, just over five and a half minutes to play, UTC gets that ball back and they're all at the 39 yard kick and they, they're only 10 points away. Delano, this one's going to last all night. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> Bill, tell them about the shock. Go ahead. Give it to them. About the what? The Shocker. The Shocker. Georgia has just beaten Mississippi State 42 to 35. <laughs> Was that a dogfight in Starkville tonight or what? <laughs> Jeez, I bet Munson is hoarse. When the dogs pull it out. As Nix goes back to pass, looking for somebody and finally completes a pass. Picks up about six yards on the play as Streeter is the... Um, Intended receiver, and he gets it. I think that might be Streeter's first reception of the night. Everett Sharp is the guy who finally stops it. Nick drops back, and he looks, and Daryl Streeter comes out of the backfield. He's wearing a lot of hats tonight. He's wearing kickoff returner, uh, pullback running the ball, or, or halfback, and now he plays receiver, and he Makes does a, a good job. Boy, doesn't he, though? He's diving, a good-looking athlete. Diving catch. Makes it second down and about four. Right across the 25-yard line. The give is going to go to Andre Lockhart. Lockhart, big yardage up the middle before he's finally knocked down by Randall Boone. Well, Bill, that was a draw play, and it worked excellent. Let's take a look at the replay. Watch Everett Sharp. Watch this. Now, he takes the ball, Lockhart. Now, watch somebody is sucking. Look at the watch block. Everett Sharp. Ooh. Look at that great block there. Good Knocks spot. him down, and Lockhart eats up some yardage all the way down to the 45-yard line. They are on the drive. Georgia Southern needs a big defense here. Again, Randall Boone, All-American out of Robert Toombs Academy, came over and knocked him down as Nix goes back to pass again, and he's going to get clobbered. And it's ball is still batted around, almost intercepted, dropped by Darren Alford after a <laughs> juggling act. It went into the hands of Everett Sharp. Holy mackerel to Andy. Everybody touched a piece of that ball, Bill. I even got a little piece up here in the, in the booth. <laughs> that was something else. Jeez. Let's take a look at a Everett Sharp, of course. Daryl Hendricks. Watch. This is going to be caused, of course, by Giff Smith, who comes over and just bats this and then is knocked down. And Darren says, I have it. No, I don't think so. Everett says, I'll get it for you. And then <laughs> Daryl Hendricks says, no, let me take it. <laughs> Nobody got it. Second down and 10. Back to pass is Nix. Here comes Giff Smith again and gets him this time. Tennessee Chattanooga has yet to pick up the outside blitz yet. I don't know if they're just not reading it right or what, but Georgia Southern, watch Giff Smith. Nobody releases on him. 61 is too late when he turns around and he says, hey, where are you going? You're not supposed to be running by me. And he's by him. And Giff Smith is having a super night. He's probably got about, how many sacks does he Five. have? Five sacks. Five sacks for Giff Smith tonight. 
course, if you look at Giff's size, I wouldn't want to block him either. <laughs> 61 looked around like, where's he going? Going to give uh, back Nick's back to pass. Long one downfield, wide open and almost intercepted there. Well, he wasn't wide open. He was well covered down there by Mashawn Sims. And Sims almost had his first interception of the of the game. He did a great job. Uh, they he did. Those defensive backs to run with those wide receivers down the field, and then somebody will call ball, and then you turn around and you look for it and find it. And Mashawn did a very good job. He almost came off with an interception there. He worked himself into perfect position and almost had that one. So it's going to bring up a fourth down as um, Rodney Oglesby is back in single safety, ready for Billy Smith's punt. Well, they don't rough him this time. Calls for a fair catch. Good deal. 38-yard punt for Billy Smith. Three minutes, 33 seconds to eat up. Georgia Southern by 10. They haven't scored in the second half. And Georgia Southern will start it at the 30-yard line. Their own, just over the 30. Well, Bill, for some reason, fans are getting up and piling out of here. It's not like it's going to be a traffic jam, and this game is well from being over. It really is. <laughs> I, I mean, they're space. going out in droves. They are. Gary Miller, big hole across the middle. Miller picks up some nice yardage, getting it across near midfield anyway, up about the 46-yard line before Theron Harris knocks him down. Again, that deceptive, you know, like you say, Delano, he's not big, but watch him just burst through here. Don't let him loose. Look how he kicked that leg up. It's kind of like a leg kick, and it's, it's kind of hard to get. And I've, I imagine the uh, defensive players say, who is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to grab a hold of those big legs kicking up like that. Miller in motion right, and then it's going to give it to Gary Miller, and Junior Jackson stacks him up after about a foot and a half. Well, Gary Miller is no magician, believe me. No, no, he <laughs> that didn't. That time there was nowhere to go, and... Uh, even and his savvy and great running ability couldn't pick up any yardage on that point. Inside three minutes. And to Irk Russell and staff, it seems like an eternity. No scoring for Georgia Southern here in the second half, and they're trying to break that trend right now, or at least eat up what's left of the clock, ticking away at two minutes and 40 seconds. Raymond Gross is going to lose a couple of yards on the play. He's wrapped up in there by a big number 58. Not on our charts here. Terry Mitchell. Well, let's put him down there. Bill, it really doesn't matter if Georgia Southern uh, loses a couple yards on one or two plays. The big thing is that they hold on to the ball because Tennessee Chattanooga will be going after it now. They're going to be trying to punch and knock the ball out of people's hands. So with this time out on the field, we're going to have a network commercial here for you. Some folks who helped pay for all this with the score of 13-3 Georgia Southern. We'll be right back. Down in Murfreesboro. Oh, it's going to be a big showdown. Indeed it is. Coach Eric Russell goes out to congratulate some players. Coach Buddy Nix. And we'll be back to wrap things up after this network commercial. And there you see the final score here at Chamberlain Field at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. The final Georgia Southern 13 and UTC 3. An excellent ball game for Georgia Southern tonight uh, considering the fact that they were playing without many of their uh, starters on uh, defense. Three got hurt tonight. And we want to thank our spotter, Scott Farmer, who was up here working with us tonight. Our statistician, uh, Jack Lane, who's frantically uh, putting together statistics over here on the side. And uh, Delano Little for being with us, for the, all the folks who have helped us out with the broadcast tonight. And um, we'll try to give you some statistics just as uh, soon as we possibly can. Once again, this is the fourth time that we have faced UTC and the fourth victory. And also uh, a reminder once more that uh, Dr. Nicholas Henry, the president of Georgia Southern College, is really anxious to get uh, alumni associations across the state started again. For those of you who might be near the metro Atlanta area, I know we didn't have an Atlanta broadcast tonight, but if you're from that area, uh, Gene Crawford, the director of the Alumni Association, is asking uh, that the folks at the metro Atlanta area would be meet, uh, to be meeting Tuesday night at uh, 6 o'clock. That's this Tuesday night, September 20th, at the Radisson Inn, I-75. 
That's at the Radisson Inn on I-75 in Atlanta at 6 o'clock. In the Augusta area, you'll have a meeting Thursday night at 6 o'clock against Evans, at Evans High School, that is, in Columbia County, just off I-20, and in Macon, October 25th, 6 o'clock at the Ibis Restaurant. Uh, that's off Riverside Drive, on Riverside Drive in Macon. Once again, the final score, 13-3 to in favor of UT Chattanooga. We'll be back with some favor final Georgia statistics. Southern there, Bill. That's favor right, favor of Georgia, Georgia Southern, Southern. yeah. Yes, over UT Chattanooga. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. At any rate, after some local commercials, we'll be back to give you the final statistics. We'll see you in a few. 20 years, but this is absolutely the best year ever. I've never seen... Well, here we are back at uh, Chamberlain Field in the press box up at the University of uh, Chattanooga and uh, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, we should say. Georgia Southern's just won by a score of 13-3 to for their third victory of the year out of three tries. And uh, Jack Lane sitting down here, and as you can see, he's frantically working on stuff, trying to get that thing done for us. As far as uh, first downs go tonight, uh, Georgia Southern was uh, beaten in the first down department, Delano, 16-13, to but one where it counted, of course. Uh, yards total, however, for Georgia Southern, 301 yards gained to 194 for UTC tonight. And the way they were opening up and uh, getting some of those big chunks at first, that, that seemed um, hard to believe. Can you it? imagine, Bill, of what that total yardage would have been if Georgia Southern wouldn't have made so many mistakes fumbling the ball away so many times. That's true. And also, uh, speaking of throwing the ball away, UTC had two interceptions tonight. Uh, they were completed eight out of 25 passes. Georgia Southern uh, completed nine of 13, no interceptions. And that's going to do it for us. Thanks very much for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, <laughs> we appreciate your uh, joining us tonight uh, with uh, the, all the folks who sure shot in Cincinnati who shot the satellite for us and the good help that we got from the folks here in Chattanooga. From Chattanooga and Chamberlain Field tonight, Raymond Gross with uh, 29 uh, carries for 110 yards this evening. And that's the final statistic with Georgia Southern winning it 13-3. to For Delano Little, I'm Bill Edwards. Good night. We'll see you soon. So long. This 1AA football classic between the Georgia Southern Eagles and the Tennessee Chattanooga Moccasins has been brought to you live by Western Sizzlin'. We're cooking what America loves best. By Eastern Airlines, we have your ticket. By Coca-Cola Classic and your local Coca-Cola bottler. And by Georgia Southern Boosters, building on your dreams for Georgia Southern Athletics. This telecast has been brought to you live from the campus of University of Tennessee at Chattanooga and has been produced by WJCL-TV Sports, a subsidiary of Lewis Broadcasting Corporation, Savannah, Georgia.